That's right, everyone. It's time for your favorite streaming segment, The Depression Chamber. The only show online where a suicidally depressed monkey reads the suicidally depressed emails of his fans. And folks, we've got some emails as per usual. I have not pre-screened these. We might encounter a few trolls. Troll in the dungeon. But on the Bumkey Jones channel, we enjoy the company of a good troll. We'll get some laughs in along with our sorrows. Perhaps that bitch Ashley will come back to torment more poor souls. Let's get the music playing. There we go. Actually, I should be listening to. I got to get myself in the mood. Just like in the bedroom, stuck getting myself in the mood, folks. Maybe I should write an email in. Pretty soft. I'll turn it up a bit. I don't know. Let me know if the music is too loud. Fucking Ashley ass bitch. God damn it. <sighs> so angry. All right, let's find a new email. We're only doing an hour of this because at midnight, one E bitch McSoy wants to do some Kino. We have one called Mumkey. My mom found poop sock. I, we have to assume that's one of the troll emails. Let's just let's just scattle, scattle, waddle right on. All right. Here's a story from. Cuck my sock. And I assume the music is okay because nobody has complained. Hello, monkey. Here is my sadness. I was born in Utah in a Mormon hellhole. My parents were divorced before I could develop memories, so I didn't care that much. My brother was a horrible bully since my earliest memories. I'm still really flinchy from all that. He'd be kneeling on my shoulders and hitting my head holding my head underwater, breaking my toys, saying anything he could to make me feel bad. I'd visit my dad sometimes, but I only cared about the video games he owned. He was always drunk and sleeping when I was in his shitty apartments. Sometimes he'd get these gross girlfriends and shit. He got a methy second wife that I absolutely despised. She'd use him for cigarettes and prescriptions. What, was she 17? She can't buy her own cigarettes? I'm sorry, I, I should not judge. I should not judge this poor woman. My mom was a lobbyist for the education system. She would have my teacher's phone numbers so they could bitch about me and micromanage me. She got remarried to some weirdo from Minnesota who tried to teach me about God and stuff like a Quentin Review's favorite Epsler. One time, my mom had a miscarriage with him. Everyone in my family was crying, but I was so happy. I was jumping on my bed with laughter, yelling, Yay! No baby! And shit. While they were talking about spiritualist stuff. When I was like five, my parents took me to some weird office where they were all quietly crying and I didn't know why. Then I was taken into a room filled with toys with some fat lady who kept asking me personal questions that I hated. I guess that was child therapy. When I was really young, I lived downtown where there was only Mexican kids who hated me because I was white. Then I moved to the suburbs where there was only hardcore Mormon white people. I never had any friends and would be treated like a weirdo. All the teachers picked on me. When I was like nine, I was all I wanted to do was die. Uh, I didn't mean to laugh at that. It was more of the uh, misorganization of the words in that sentence. I tried to hold my breath under a pillow until I died like a retard baby a lot. But then I figured I could probably pull it off. If I tied a cord, around, if I tied a cord around my neck and hung it, hung it on some flimsy doorstopper thing while standing on a guitar amp that I'd kick off. I'd just stand there like that sometimes, leaning forward stuff, building the courage, until eventually I tripped forward and the amp holding my feet fell over. 
Only thing that happened, though, is the door thing broke off, but I got a red mark on my neck. Later, though, my family started bothering me about it, and I'd make up stories about how I got the mark. Until eventually I admitted it, because I was pissed off about something, I think. They forced me into therapy again and made me take drugs. One time I chugged the bottle, but I sadly didn't die. From this, I've developed a large hatred for forced therapy, child therapy, and mental hospitals when they imprison people for trying to kill themselves. Because I think it should be a personal right to die. And people should stop reproducing because the kids can't consent and overpopulation is destroying the earth. Anyways, in middle school, everyone decided I was a drug addict. Addict. One time, a kid drew a picture of me with needles in my arms and showed it to a teacher who laughed at it. The thing I've loved most in life was the arts, especially music, so I was in band class. But my music teacher was a big, fat, mountain, dew chugging Mormon freak who'd talk about Mormonism in class and stuff. He'd pick on me so hard I wanted to beat him with his trumpet. Starting in middle school, I completely stopped caring about grades, and it's been that way since. My mom made me go to an all-computer high school that sucked and gave me no chance of actually graduating. What is an all-computer high school? I'm not familiar. But at least I got to listen to music and watch YouTube all day. Is that like you, you show up to the school, but then all your classes are online on the computer? Seems strange you would even have to leave the house. I guess by technical standards, I'd be considered gay, but I hope not. I hope I'm not, because that's gay. I discovered furries through an episode of My Strange Addiction, and it immediately became my disgusting fetish that I hate. I started Gay Ass Yif Art Thieving Blog on Tumblr. That became all I thought about because it got really big. It had like 4,000 watchers. But then my mom or someone ripped my phone out of my hands and found it. I told them I wasn't a faggot though. Oops. Did I slip out the, the Quentin word? <laughs> Quentin's favorite word? <laughs> and I think they believed me. So that's nice. Hopefully. Now it's up to the present. That was my boring, sad life. In total, I want to die and always think about it. I'd kill myself if I could feel no pain. Maybe I'll pull it off if I can get numb by being drunk or something. The perfect method I think I've thought up is getting a hat and tying a bunch of grenades on it and pulling the pins out so my head explodes all at once. I've never been able to relate to anyone ever, and I don't think anyone could relate to me. Every time I've tried to reach out, I felt humiliated and immediately retreaded. I think he meant retreated. He's justified because he's a furry. Thank you, Lou. I've made one friend on Discord, but he stopped talking to me to play Diablo with some other furry F-slurs, I guess. Sorry for being a boring loser, Mumkey. Please don't ban me. Thank you, Papa. And that's the email. Kiro the wolf, no. So we've got, I assume, a now high school, Mormon raised, closet, gay, furry, who everybody thinks is addicted to drugs. Well, chat, what do you think? What's the cure? Let's, uh, let's get the wisdom of the crowd on this one. What should Mr. Cuck My Sock do? This is, Pumba says, it's the story of his life. The email is mumpkyjones at gmail.com. Really hard to remember, I know. You can email your stories there, but uh, don't expect to hear them anytime soon. Sheepover says, get a job. I don't know, sound like, uh, it sounds like he was making some real V-Bucks off of his furry blog. There is no cure. It will spread like wildfire. What, gay furries? <laughs> I 
I don't know, there's there's money to be made in the gay furry community if only your parents were more understanding. Maybe you could make some money with your vlog. Let's move on. Let's move on to the next one. We're not here to help, we're here to let people vent anonymously online. I'm not a therapist. I'm just the guy who reads stuff and, and lets out Quentin Review's favorite word every once in a while by accident. Really, I should have read Quentin's DMs on the Depression Chamber. That was the saddest shit I've ever seen. But let's move on. I apologize in advance. Trying to have this all make sense is hard. This is going to mostly be in chronological order, so at least there's that. When I was in fourth grade, my first year of public school, since I was mostly homeschooled, I near constantly peed myself. I flapped my hands uncontrollably at times. I was extremely absent-minded and gullible. I didn't really understand the teasing or bullying at the time. What I did understand was that I was always avoided. I'm going to predict this man will be diagnosed with... Autism Spectrum Disorder, folks! The flapping of the hands in fourth grade, the peeing... That's, that's the monkey prediction. The next few years blur together, and I really only have a handful of memories. Oh, wait a second, this might... Could this be a girl? I don't know. My first boyfriend... I was looking to see if this person said they were gay or a girl, but I guess we'll find out. My first boyfriend, a guy who I had a huge crush on for two to three years, broke up with me via text saying that he couldn't be with someone like me and that I was too sad to be loved. I guess he had a valid point. At the time, I was just really an emo preteen and constantly needed attention. If I felt like wanting to kill myself, and that was often, I let people know. Never the right people, mind you. I would beg them to not say a word to anyone else, and it mostly worked. When he broke up with me, he got his mom to tell my mom that I threatened to kill myself and that I hated myself. My mom pulled me into her room, and I just sat there and cried. My mom asked if I wanted to be hospitalized, and I said no. She didn't let me out of her sight for the night. The following years resulted in my parents doing nothing but walking on eggshells whenever I was around. I wasn't allowed to talk about being depressed. I wasn't allowed to talk about my self-harm. I haven't talked about self-harm to many people. I still don't like talking about it. There are some memories I still can't shake. Sitting on my bathroom floor at 3 or 4 a.m. trying to take apart a razor to get the blades. Cutting my fingers up in the process and panicking when a cut on my arm wouldn't stop bleeding. Both stick out to name some. I knew my family knew about this a few years later. They didn't do anything, even as I visibly got worse. I thought my next boyfriend was better. It was a long distance or it was long distance so we would Skype, watch movies together online and text near constantly. Long story short, he tried to sexually manipulate me. I was a 14/15 and he was 20. He sent me sexually porn photos/videos and it got to the point where he started asking me for pictures. I'm also pretty sure he started jacking off on our Skype calls but he denied it. A friend at the time helped me get out of that relationship about a year or two later, but quickly guilted me into getting into a relationship with her. I never had a lot of friends, so I felt pressured into accepting. The guy kept trying to contact me. At best, he said I made him start smoking, but at worst, he said he was killing himself because of me. I didn't know how to handle it, and even went, uh, went even deeper into a depressive state. I eventually got out of all relationships, but other issues started coming up. I've always had gender dysphoria, okay, that's starting to make more sense here, and was just starting to socially come out as transgender. I was very curious that they were dating both boys and girls at this time. I did a lot of theater at the time, so I thought I would be more accepted. I came out to my family first. My parents cried. They told me I didn't know what I was talking about that I was making a mistake, that I copy-pasted my coming out letter, I poured hours and hours into this letter, and that I would never be a man or their son. After two years of this, I had my first suicide attempt. I went to be hit by a truck. 
It didn't work, but my mom finally realized that she would either have to accept me as her son or that I would end my life without that support. She finally said that she accepted me, but it took another few years before she used my actual name versus my birth name, started using male pronouns, etc. She still told everyone around her that she was ashamed of me. The next major thing that happened in my life was me getting my next partner. I met them at theater and things were fine. We were both young, trans, and gay. It went fine for almost a year, but I started doubting myself. I didn't know if I actually loved them, but I knew they were starting to hold me on a pedestal in an unhealthy way. I broke up with them after just under a year having dated and it was hard. We still remained friends since I still did like them as a person, but when they tried to kill themselves, I'm curious that you're using the themself pronoun here. If, uh, if they were the same as you, surely you could have said himself, folks. And I was the one who had to call the police. I couldn't take anything else. A couple weeks after they got out of a mental ward and seemed to be doing a bit better, I told them that I couldn't talk to them anymore. I had to, blo I had to block all contact, and it was even worse than when we broke up. I had to block their number, but they kept getting friends to call and message me just to harass me. They made multiple fake social media accounts and tried to contact me or just stalk my accounts. They lied to my parents and told them all sorts of made-up shit that I did to them. Their friends told me I was being selfish, but I just didn't love them romantically and was having issues explaining myself and my emotions. I really don't like talking about this, but a few years later we started talking again and are friends to this day. They thankfully got the help they needed and are more stable. Two years later, I tried to kill myself for the second time. My dysphoria was worse than ever. I was getting physically and mentally attacked in the places I loved for being trans, gay, slash mildly autistic. My family still wasn't fully accepting. Hell, my sister moved out because of me, and a bunch of other shit just piled on. It was near... Near Year's Eve. I'm guessing you meant New Year's Eve. And I was going to down two or three fistfuls of whatever medication I could find and hope it would be enough. Before I even got too far, my parents found me. They didn't take me to a hospital, but I was thrown in therapy. I was put on medication soon after. High doses of antidepressants and heavy sedatives 24-7. My medications kept getting changed and upped, but even today, nothing is working as it should. I'm 20 turning 21 in a few months. I live alone with all my family in other states. I have a minimum wage job that I can't go anywhere from, and I'm fucking terrified of getting into another relationship. Despite moving forward in my transition even more, getting hormones and surgery in sight, I still constantly get called a girl. I'm still extremely depressed. I don't see myself living to 21. I know I'm unloved. It fucking sucks and there isn't a day that goes by where I don't think the world would be better off without me. I still self-harm, but I'm about a month clean right now. I live every day just managing. I'm almost always in a state of disassoci dissociation. The only reason that I haven't offed myself by now is because I have a dog now. There's still a lot that I haven't talked about, a lot of trauma and abuse I can't comprehend enough to put it out there yet. Maybe I'll write it all out one day. Don't know. At least it felt good to get some of this out. I would say, first of all, you remind that pupper that he is a good boy or girl every day. Every day. Because that love you give that pup will be given back tenfold. You can never again say you feel unloved if you have that good boy or girl rub its belly every day, every morning. I say this every morning, every night, and it's so true. It's so true. You love that pup. As for the rest of it, I don't know how much advice I could give. 
That story was very not Kino. Tough crowd from Michael. Tough crowd. And Captain Land, I can't relate to any of this, and I have no sympathy. I think I might be a bad person. Nah. Nah, I don't think you're a bad person because you you don't relate to the struggles of random people you don't know. Really, uh, some might consider you the lucky one, <laughs> Mr. Guy in the chat. Because if we all became morbidly depressed from every single sad story we heard, <laughs> uh, society would not be able to function. We need true sociopaths like you <laughs> to... Keep McDonald's open! And etc. Let's move on. Now, ooh, this one this one is from a usual Twitch chatter named Destiny. I I have a feeling this might be a troll, but let's give him a chance! Let's give him a chance. It looks promising. Okay. I saw Asperger at a grocery store. This should be called the Anger Chamber because puppy these spoiled brats. That's uh, ironic that the filter changed that to puppy. Thank you for the $5, Nico. I saw Asperger at a grocery store in Los Angeles. God, I'm, I'm going to read those later. This is a very sad story that Destiny wants us to read. Yesterday, I told him how cool it was to meet him in person, but I didn't want to be a douche and bother him and ask for photos or anything. He said, oh... Like you're doing now? I was taken aback. And all I could say was, huh? But he kept cutting me off and going, huh? 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 And closing his hand shut in front of my face. I walked away and continued with my shopping, and I heard him chuckle as I walked off. When I went to pay for my stuff up front, I saw him trying to walk out the doors with like 15 Milky Ways in his hands without paying. The girl at the counter was very nice about it and professional and was like, sir, you need to pay for those first. At first, he kept pretending to be tired and not hear her, but eventually he turned back around and brought them to the counter. When she took one of the bars and started scanning it multiple times, <laughs> he stopped her and he told her to scan them individually to prevent any electrical inferference. And he then turned around and winked at me. <laughs> I don't even think that's a word. After she scanned each bar and put them in a bag and started to say the price, he kept interrupting her by yawning really loudly. Now, Destiny13777 at gmail.com. If you're going to make this about Asperger, I would have at least changed the copy pasta a little bit. I'm sure Burger would not be buying Milky Way, so I would have changed it to perhaps uh, 40s. He was buying 1540s and wanted them to be scanned individually because uh, he wanted to prevent the electrical inferference. But what are you going to do? <laughs> Thank you for that truly sad story. Let's see the donations that we've been missing out on. Let's take a look in a book. All right. We've got Michael. We only care about lonely, incel, white, and Asian straight beta males with rich, divorced parents. Good point. Gold Rex King says, Hi, Mumkey. How many more insane stories have you gotten, like the Greatest Depression story? And how many trolls have you gotten since then? Well, this is the first Depression Chamber since then. We've had three stories tonight. The first two were not legendary, and the third one was a troll, so <laughs> you tell me. I can't do that math in my head. What is that? Let's see, two plus one. That's a little... That's too much. Let's move on. Okay, this one's really short. Dear Mumkey, I don't know why I'm writing this, but I think it might help. In high school, I met this chunky Asian goth girl in my school. Haven't we all had our experience with the chunky goth Asian girl in high school? After a month or so, we started dating. I fell in love, but then after a year, she told me how she wanted to become a guy. So many transgender stories. Then, so, after that, she would always talk down to me and make me feel useless and worthless. That fucked me, I told her. 
I would try it, but after a while, I was losing interest. I told her, but she threatened to kill herself. So I stuck it in for a couple months. Then I was going to break up with her. But then my house burnt down and my brother got burnt 80% of his body. I had to move in with her mom for a while. I ended up breaking up with her after three months when I moved out. I left out a lot because you're ending. I'm, I'm sure that Machamp's heroic thumbs up was appropriately timed with that story. So many stories of transgender people talking about wanting to commit suicide. Isn't this statistic that uh, transgender veterans, like 70% of them, die from suicide? It's a very at-risk group. Angel for $6. Yo, when are we going to watch more film submissions and did you already review The Running Man? Angel, I, I do not think we have watched The Running Man yet. We will probably watch more tomorrow. Probably. Let's move on to the next story. Aren't there like seven trans vets though? Uh, soon to be zero if Trump gets his way. Okay, here's a long one. Hey, Mumkey, I heard you'd read these, so I figured I'd write in. I've pretty much had awful anxiety and depression since childhood. Didn't get it diagnosed professionally until I was in my 20s, but retrospectively, it's clear that it's been a problem for over a decade. I grew up in a pretty shit household. My parents were divorced, and my mom lived with my grandma, who was a severe hoarder. More than half of our house was filled with trash and animal shit, and the first floor was falling apart at the seams with water damage and mold that nobody bothered to acknowledge, much less take care of. Growing up in that sort of household, you can imagine that I was always desperate to get out of the house as often as possible. Unfortunately, my school life, which otherwise would have been a good escape, was troubled as well. It's the same story every time. Awkward, anxious kid has trouble connecting to his peers and finds it difficult to make real friendships. Everyone pretty much knows how that goes, so I'm not going to bitch too much about it. The problem was, going back and forth between these two toxic environments took a pretty massive toll on me, and I ended up becoming extremely reclusive as time went on. It's difficult, I think, to have clinical depression when you're a young child. You feel so shit, tired, and shitty all the time, wanting to hide away from the world and everyone in it. But you don't really understand why. You don't understand why all those other kids aren't feeling this way. It starts to make you hate everyone who very clearly doesn't have to deal with that pain. It makes you feel fundamentally different from them. It really didn't help that nearly every adult in my life seemed, to me, to refuse to help me in any way. I was deemed problematic because I would have outbursts during class and start fights and it became common for my desk to be put in a corner away from everyone else. Just think about that. My teachers put a literal, not metaphorical, divide between me and my classmates, singling me out as some sort of other. During one year of elementary school, they separated me entirely from my class and sent me straight to the office every morning with schoolwork to do, alone, in silence, for eight hours every day. You can imagine what all this did for my self-image. I started seeing myself as some sort of monster, a grotesque zombie. I felt like one. To be honest with you, I kind of still do. It's really easy to slip back into that mentality of being much lesser than everyone else around me. Looking back, I'm sure there were a lot of opportunities for me to change my path, but at the same time, it all just felt so unfair, you know? It felt that way all the way through high school. I never really found a way to bridge that gap between me and other people, but I learned how to bottle up those things I was having and pretend to fit in. I pretended to be happy, to laugh at jokes, to make my own jokes. It wasn't real. But as long as other people thought it was real, as long as I could convince other people that I was a real person too, I felt like maybe I could start to believe it. Like if I somehow convinced everyone around me that I was just like them, it would come true and I would stop feeling like such a failure. I got really good at it. 
but like, it felt like everyone around me kind of knew somehow. Like they knew it was all an act. That I was a fraud. Nobody ever got too close to me. I never became friends with anybody. It sucked. It was really shit. I honestly didn't know it was going to be this hard to talk about all of this. My stomach is kind of twisting in on itself. Suffice to say, college was a real shit show too. I made some friends, finally, with my roommate and his old buddies, but I could tell that they thought I was kind of disgusting. I was right, of course. After hanging out with them for a few months, they, basi they basically told me to fuck off and not talk to them anymore. Now, in both of our defenses, this group of people and I were never going to mesh at uh, all that well. It was a bunch of normie-ass girls who I shared almost no interest with but I still felt pretty hurt, and of course one of them was my roommate, who I'd have to be around for the rest of the year. If I was thinking clearly, I probably should have just asked the RA to move me, and maybe I would have gotten lucky and been paired with someone I actually liked. Instead, I just resigned myself to being around somebody I had beef with all the time. Obviously, that didn't go well. Near the end of the semester, I ended up punching him in the face in the middle of a disagreement, in my head, I thought we'd have a fist fight and I'd get in trouble and move somewhere else. In actuality, he left the room, went straight to the on-campus police, and had me arrested for battery. Boom. Just like that, I'm a registered criminal. Funny how that happens. You strike somebody on the face, and you get arrested. And it's your fault. Not singling this guy out, just a general life lesson. We should all learn. Boom! Just like that, I'm a registered criminal. He presses charges and I have to go to court. Meanwhile, my school threatens to expel me on the spot. They graciously allow me to continue attending, but move me to the basement of the dorm. Once again, away from everyone else. It's at this point that I hit complete rock fucking bottom. I'm a criminal now. Everyone on campus will think I'm a psycho. I can never get a good job. I'm locked away from everyone else again. It was way too much for me to handle. I spent the next three days entirely in my room, barely moving from my bed. I spent the next six months doing the same, but this time eating so I didn't die. Because that's the thing. I didn't want to kill myself. I didn't want to die. I wanted to live and kick this motherfucker's teeth in and find the silver lining and succeed. But I didn't have the energy to do any of that. All I had the energy to do was sleep and buy food. I had no idea how to do anything besides play the part of this grotesque zombie. I think I cried more during those months than I ever have in my entire life. I cried as I laid down to sleep, and I cried when I woke up, and I cried every time I thought about my future, and when I thought about my family, and when I thought about how unfair it all was. Because it really did feel so unfair that I was here at this point in my life. In my head not too long ago, I had envisioned that I would be popular and successful and well on my way to the better future I had always wanted by now. Instead, I was locked away in the basement with no friends and a crumbling future. I fell pretty deep into an MMO addiction playing RuneScape of all things, spending about 16 hours a day just grinding. It meant that I it meant I didn't really have to think about anything besides the numbers on the screen, which was nice. I was content to just let days pass without doing anything of merit. Again, in retrospect, it's pretty pathetic, but I didn't have the energy to do anything else. Obviously, I wasn't going to class, and my grades became basically unsalvageable. For some reason, the college didn't bother to check in on me at any point. There wasn't really a moment where I snapped out of it here. It's just that at some point I stopped being so tired. I started going outside again, not for any real reason like going to class, but just because I felt like it. I went up to the roof a few times and just looked out over the campus and thought about a lot of things. Not even really anything in particular, just a lot of things. When you're depressed, you do a lot of introspection, I think but most of it is clouded by a really pervasive, ugly pessimism. You think about everything in the worst terms. Think about yourself and the other people as being terrible, irredeemable. It's like everything is covered in a layer of shit, 
and it becomes really hard to think objectively. When I was sitting there, on that roof, peering over the edge, seeing everyone else's ants dotting the sidewalk, breathing in the spring air, I don't know. Everything got really clear for a while. I can't even tell you what conclusions I came to while I was up there. I can't remember. It's been a lot of the years. It's been a lot of years. But I know that I wanted to change, you know? Like a real change, a self-driven change. That was about six years ago now, and I'm in a much better place than I was then. I don't want to go into detail about the path I took to get here since it's kind of boring and kind of personally identifying, but it's a path that was as gratifying to walk as it was difficult. And I don't know, I felt like writing in because I struggled with depression for almost as long as I've been alive and I've managed to reach a pretty stable place as an adult, you know? Dot to bio? Dot to bio? Well, maybe it was interesting to read at least. Thanks for reading, by the way. Have a good day, my man. P.S. I'm sorry if this email is written like absolute dog shit. I basically only wrote through once and drank a cup of cup of, a cup of coffee part of the way through. Uh, by the way, Mumkey, please don't read my name in the last email I sent. <laughs> don't worry, buddy. Did I say that wrong? Dot to bio? It's Naruto's catchphrase that means you know. Because this guy said you know a lot. Dot to bio. Oh, I said it right. Thank you. Thank you, Learned Plastic. Society Liver said, Can't help but notice that there is a common thread of autism among these submissions. Among uh, transgenderism, gender dysphoria, dysmorphia, those, those two seem to pop up the most. Assuming it's genuine, I don't think it's hard to believe that some of this hatred by friends slash family is perceived a lot of the time. Perhaps, uh, perhaps they are over overestimating the feelings of those around them. I, I think that also just comes from being depressed, too. A lot of the anxiety, you get really, um, um, I always forget the word. I guess, I mean, anxious is fine, but you get suspicious, perhaps, that uh, those around you might actually really hate you. And it, uh, it's just a vicious cycle of the negative thoughts feeding into each other. Trapdoor Beaver said, Thanks for the entertainments, mate. No problem, Trapdoor. I'm glad you are entertained by this. Paranoid. Thank you, Lou. Thank you, Lou, the king of paranoia. Play the Final Fantasy song Nostalgia. Um, this song is actually based on that. I think it was this one, or maybe one of the other ones, because I... No, it was a different one in the same album. Because uh, Asperger was making me original music for our Elliot Rodder documentary, and I said, hey, just copy this song, but change it, and I sent him that Final Fantasy song. Oh, yeah, we've read like four or five so far. All right, here's a short one. Hello, Mumkey. I think this is a good time to tell someone what's happened over the last couple of months and why I've been depressed. It started last... Uh, it started lasted summer. I got a close friend named William who started dating one of my other close friends. Let's call her Jane. And everyone was happy for them, including me. Jane had been raped in sixth grade, so I was happy to see she was finally able to get over it. Uh... I don't know if she was over it. Uh, when we got back for the break, I am in high school, by the way, they had broken up and I had no idea why. He never told me why, so I went on with life. After a few months later, he started dating this girl. She was very mentally ill, to put it lightly. Him and the girl got suspension for a month after they were caught doing it on school property. That was when I found out the truth. It turns out he had been pressuring Jane into sex even though he knew what happened to her 
and while yes, they were dating, she made it very clear she wasn't ready. But then he started threatening to kill himself to get her to do the things he wanted. He lied to me through it all. I wasn't even the victim, and I still fell hurt. I feel depressed because I'm never going to be able to help my friend Jane. I feel like I could have done something to help her. Now he's sexual harassing anyone he knows suffers from mental illness. The worst part is I can't do anything. I feel like I don't have the right to be depressed, and frankly, why should I? I'm not the victim. I wish I could get over myself, but I can't. Thanks for listening. My advice to both men and women, but mostly women, if a guy or a girl, but probably guy, ever threatens to kill himself because you will not have sex with him, tell him to do it. He's not serious, and if he is, then he he should probably die. <laughs> if he's going to kill himself because you will not have sex with him in middle school, yeah, go ahead and uh, just say do it. Do it, pussy. He's not going to fucking do it. Fuck him. Fuck that guy. And, uh... See, why does he think he can't help his friend Jane? She's still alive. They just had, like, a gross breakup. Why not just, like, just go be a good friend to her, dude? Did something happen? Did I miss a part? Maybe something happened. Someone just got sentenced to prison for murder for saying something like that. No, 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 Lucifer666606. That's a very, very different story. There's a difference between, I'm going to kill myself. Okay, do it. Goodbye. And <laughs> what she did was, <laughs> for months, send him paragraphs of text telling him he needs to kill himself. Do it right now. Where are you? Why aren't you doing it? Your parents want you to do it. I think that's very different from a three-word uh, do it F slur response. Uh, I, don't, I don't think you'll get prison time for that. But what, what do I know? I'm not a judge. I should be. Judge Judy. It's my mother. <laughs> uh, Gold Rex King, upload your videos to your website, Mumkey. You know you won't stay on YouTube for much longer. What are you fucking talking about? All the videos on my YouTube are on my website. <laughs> But thanks for the $2 advice. You, you gave me $2 worth of free advice. Michael says, I miss the incel monkey. He would have said threaten her. Well, maybe on a different program. On a scripted program. With, with time for actual satire. Live satire is not always as clear or successful. <laughs> Judge Jones, that's right. <laughs> Judge Fudge. Who was that Discord dork that begged for nudes or he would kill himself? I don't know, but I hope he did it. This guy sent his twice. Okay. All right. New story. Hey, Mumkey, you can call me Inazo. It's what I go by online and will eventually be my name. Ooh, okay, cool. My story isn't really as bad as the people that you've read the stories of on stream so far, so by no means am I attempting to set a new bar here. I hope nobody is attempting to do that. Tell your honest, genuine story. Don't try to become the next uh, stream highlight. Sorry if I wrote anything wrong here. I have some learning disabilities that affect my ability to write things properly. I live in a place called Maynooth, but feel no reason to change that as it's not an important detail. I guess one of the main things going on with me is that I have a memory problem that people either don't acknowledge or don't know about. I basically can't remember most of my life because I forgot most of the things that happened to me. I'm not too sure of the reason for this despite the fact that I've been going to appointments for tests to determine what it is. So hypothetically, perhaps he doesn't even remember that he sent in this email, folks. For a lot of my life, this problem resulted in an identity crisis. I was still only a child, but I couldn't remember who I was. I spent a lot of years trying to figure that out. Who I am, I mean. It's pretty easy for me to know if I like something, but it's difficult for me to find things that I'm passionate about. 
One of the only things I have is playing baseball one-handed with a two-handed metal bat, and hurling, that's a sport in my country. The baseball tends to fuck up my arm, to be honest. I think the route of my depression comes from the fact that through the years of self-discovery, I've determined that the only good thing... The only thing I'm good at is protecting people because I find it pretty easy to show no reaction to pain despite how sensitive I've always been to it. The problem is that since I moved to a new school in fifth year, I haven't made any friends due to my general expressionless on my face when I'm quiet. And the impression I made on people from that day, since at the time I was still trying to figure out who I was, and was kind of just quiet and confusing. The reason this is, a, this is a problem is that I learned to not react to pain so I could protect people, but now the barrier from keeping me from developing any friends is that in the new school, people are spreading the rumor that I can't feel pain, which is untrue. I think I only made myself seem more scary to people when I tried to explain that I can feel it, but just don't react. I'm pretty pale and skinny, and I have a... And I have a different uniform to other people because I pass out if I'm too hot. So I'm pretty much just always wearing tracksuit pants and a blue PE t-shirt that's never buttoned and has no sleeves, regardless of whether it's snowing, hail, wind, or sun. I stand out because of my appearance and face, so people don't really talk to me. I used to be a lot more antisocial and confused, but I started following Bushido a few years ago and again and again, the one problem that I'm encountering is that I follow a code to protect people and smile, and the only thing I'm good at is protecting. Yet I have trouble smiling and I have no one to protect. I'm pretty much just living in a state of trying to be invisible, as I'd rather have people think nothing of my presence rather than fear me, and I'm just scared of the next time that I'll lose all of my memories and essentially just die without anyone knowing because my body will still be here to just rebuild the pieces in the form of a confused child with no memories. I was wondering, what do you think I should do? This definitely isn't the worst of my problems. Believe me, it really isn't. But it's the one that, ironically, hurts me the most. This sounds like, and I don't know if this is my advice, maybe maybe it will be my advice. This sounds like an anime, and I don't mean that as an insult. You're the, you're the guy in class who follows the Bushido code. You want to protect people, you have the superpower that you feel a little pain. You got that pale skin, you wear a, a different outfit from all the NPC characters in your show. Really, I don't have any advice other than perhaps adapt your experiences into a story, which is what I tend to tell a lot of people. Inazo, there he is. That, that can't be him. Is he here right now? I'm 18. It isn't dimension. Inazo, you you have an anime name already. You have the anime story. Get drawn that anime book. That's what I'll say. Inazo, what do you think? You want to be an anime? Also, did you send this email twice because due to your memory problem, you forgot that you sent it the first time? Could it be? It's based off of my favorite author. What is the whole... Oh, the Inazo name? He says, hell ye. Well, there you go. If anybody in the chat, since he's actually here, if you have better advice than turn your life into an anime, go ahead and give it to him. Because, uh, I don't know if uh, making Inazu Shippuden, as Jumkimon said, is really going to solve his issues. His favorite author is Kishimoto. <laughs> He's the last of his clan, yeah, I have to assume. He's basically that Psy character from Naruto Shippuden. I was going to make an edit. There is a scene where Naruto and Sakura find Psy's book. And they're like, oh my god, I can't believe what's in Sai's book. This is crazy. And I was going to edit it. Have it be a bunch of lowly stuff. And of course, Sai would be replaced with that Sai guy from YouTube. But I never made that edit. So there you go. All right, let's see. I'm going to check Discord real quick. 
see the ETA on Kino, and we'll keep reading these until Kino begins. All right, it should be good until midnight. New story. Hey, Mumkey. I assume this is the email I send this shit to, so here goes. Just a disclaimer. I'm not depressed now, but I get shivers whenever I think about this time of my life. I figure that most people use alt accounts for these emails, so I shouldn't have to state that. Middle school was in my when, middle school was when my life got pretty rocky. Sixth grade was fine. It was the last good year of my life until last year. In seventh grade, my parents got divorced. I was distraught over this. I cried like every night for like a week when I found out. It was a sign that my life was changing. My life after that point was completely different. A new phase of my life started. I'm past that phase now, and I'm glad about it, but I still want to die every time I think about it. The divorce was the only really bad thing about seventh grade. I had friends and was bonding with a girl named Lindsay, I don't care about saying her name, she's a fucking cunt and deserves any bit of hate she can get. Back in middle school, we were really chill. We related on a lot of stuff. She showed me good books and some internet stuff I didn't know about. She was a very interesting kind of person. She was very open about things and wasn't afraid to say stuff. We were friends for a while and in 8th grade, real shit dropped. We had a day in 8th grade where we went to a local park and got to fuck around for a few hours. After the excitement died down, me and Lindsay were in a secluded part of the park and started talking. She said she wanted to confide a secret in me. In me. At this point, I was very childish about just about everything. I realized this because of what she told me. She told me... Oof. Oof. She told me that she had sex with one of my friends. This was a huge shock to me. I was really worried about it. But then she told me that, since she told me a secret, I would have to share one of mine. I hope it's not that he had sex with the same friend. That's my guess. But, but probably not. So I shared her my biggest secret ever. I shared her my fetish. God, I hope he tells us. I had barely discovered my fetish at the time, and I didn't even know what the word fetish meant. I'm gonna share it, since I'm using my throwaway account. I have a mind control fetish. I shared with her about my obsessions with it, and the shit I hypnotized myself to do back then. I'm sharing it because it sort of matters later. I more or less want to vent about it for now. When I got home that afternoon, I was alone. I called the cops on her. I said that the guy she had sex with made advances on her. This was a huge mistake. I got them both in huge trouble and Lindsay hated me after that. Are you sure she's the huge cunt in this situation, dude? <laughs> Which I wish had been the end of it. In the second semester of ninth grade, I dropped to my lowest point in life. I was back being friends with Lindsay, and I was introduced to her friend Josie. Josie was kind of cute, and we related on a lot of stuff. This is the Ashley of my story, I guess. Oof. The love interest. We had texted each other so much over the course of the next two months. I shared with her my fetish as well. In fact, we roleplayed as her being master and me being slave for a few weeks. This is ninth grade, folks! He's taking the words right out of my mouth! <laughs> <laughs> Oof. That's okay, Jared Jams. You don't need to get the Ashley reference. We will continue after a brief swig of Le clock. She was Master Chief, I was Cortana. 
Uh oh. We were here for a little while, and then she handed me a piece of paper in the hallway a few days later. It was a page-long rant about all this stuff that was stressing her out. She was bi and was stuck between wanting to date me or Lindsay. This ended in a weird-ass love triangle between the three of us. Everybody's story sounds like an anime. Both of us wanting to love Josie and hating each other. This held for about a day and Lindsay randomly stopped talking to us. So me and Josie decided to become boyfriend and girlfriend. Really, you, you guys were master and slave. And not boyfriend and girlfriend. Seems like you skipped a step. This lasted a whole of one day with a cringy Facebook post with it. This had ended when Lindsay went to Josie's house and literally choked her into getting back together. So she left me for this manipulative bitch. They even had lesbian sex and Lindsay wasn't afraid to share any of it with me. In fact, she stole Josie's phone and sent me a pic of her boobs. I blocked them both after that. Why? Whoa! Why would you block that? You say, thank you, sir. May I have some more? Getting cucked never felt so good. Even during this time of them both being blocked, Lindsay would find any chance she could to blackmail me about my fetish during class, randomly saying things like loudly, what about hypnosis, while jabbing me in the shoulder. I got a lot of weird looks for that. I was fucking furious with her. She stopped after this, which I am so glad for. This is around where the story ends. Me and Josie occasionally talk, but only during group chats and never directly to each other. That's about it. I'm in one of the best points in my life now, and I'm glad to put this behind me. I just really needed somewhere to vent. I love you, Mumkey, and you're a great man. I'm not going to lie. I would not be embarrassed by any of this. Uh, I guess uh, I didn't go through it. But this is some, this is some Chad shit. Having a girl dump you to have a hot, sexy lesbian girl, and they send you nudes the day it happens? I mean, it, maybe I'm sexist. If she left you for a guy, and he sent a dick pic, and, <laughs> and his dick was much larger than yours, then yes, this would be crippling. <laughs> But when it's a chick and you got some nudes out of it, I mean, at the end of the day, is that really so bad? There's there's other Josies out there. There's only one pair of those tits on your phone. <laughs> it's not so bad. I'm glad you're doing better now, but shit, man. I don't know if I got any nudes in ninth grade. Come on. Let, let's uh, let's hope that uh, let's hope they were all 18 years old <laughs> in ninth grade. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's for the best you got rid of that picture, actually. Never mind. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have a few donations. Uh, Chiru Gian Crane said, Sent a Dropbox version of my contest vid on the 14th. On the 15th, I replied to that email with the YouTube version. Now I'm worried the email conversation had moved to the 15th. Making it appear late. Can you make sure everybody dies? Yeah, don't worry about it. Everybody who submitted, even if it was late, I'm going to allow it, because why not? It's not like the film festival went up on the 15th. Yeah, you're fine. Don't worry about it. Angel Parada for $5 said, I gave Rusty Cage $100, and he still hasn't made any announcements. Neither has he dyed his hair hot pink. I know I am not getting scammed. No, you're not. Rusty is almost done with his comic. Uh, he's been posting updates. Or maybe I'm just confusing that with our private conversations. Uh... Rusty's comic book is almost finished. He says that he's doing the coloring and it's the most difficult part, but it will be done soon. And he wants to dye his hair hot pink, I think for a YouTube video after he finishes the book. So there is no scamming. Rusty Cage is delivering on everything. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. I'm also $100 into that. 
Funny story, I donated the 100 bucks to Rusty's Kickstarter, and then I think my channel was deleted the next day. <laughs> so, I, uh, I was like, oh yeah, I'm on top of the world! YouTube ad revenue, I can just throw my buddy 100 bucks! And then, oh. <laughs> now, now I just got fired. <laughs> but I didn't ask for the money back! I'm a good friend! Michael says he dealt with two lesbian girls in ninth grade where you dealt with Uncle Alex. Yes, unfortunately. Lou says, Mumkey looks like Jimmy Neutron. I'll take it. I wish I had a brain blast haircut. I just have, uh, I guess, generic Midwestern haircut. All right, I think the boys are almost ready to Kino. Okay, Everidge is almost home. We'll, we'll do it then. We'll do it then. So maybe we have time for one or two more stories, folks. We will be kinoing tonight. Happy Death Day 2. And hopefully very soon we'll be doing Alita, because I saw Alita today. I need to plug in my charger to my laptop. I forgot to do that. No, not lowly, Skumkey, but thanks for stealing my opening joke for that future episode! Anyway. Mom said it's my turn to host a Aquino. Fuck off, Patchy! No! Let's move on. New story, folks. New story. I look in the mirror every morning for about two minutes thinking of what would happen if everyone I loved died right in front of me. I used to cry whenever I thought about that kind of thing, but I don't feel anything now except envy for the sensitive, emotional mess I once was. I spend most of my time watching Netflix and jacking off. Occasionally, I go outside and just walk around the town pretending I have somewhere to be or something to do. Sometimes I have this sudden urge to just shout something extremely embarrassing at the top of my lungs in public, but I never act on those urges. Sometimes I look at people and think I'd like to get to know that person, and other times I look at people and think how easy would it be just to bludgeon them to death with that fucking metal pipe over there. I end up just buying a video game or liters of soda. I never really got into alcohol. That's probably one of the only things I'm proud of about myself. I live in a one-bedroom flat, and the sad thing is I've always wanted this. I have never wanted children or a wife. I have horrible commitment issues. I never really get good at anything. I just learn the basics and then get bored. I can't have a relationship that lasts more than a month because my brain says if you don't get out soon, you'll never be able to leave. I have this feeling of loneliness all the time and I feel like if I don't do something about it soon, I'll die alone and I don't know how to feel about that. And that is the email. seems to have conflicting thoughts and desires in his head. Both uh, wanting to overcome his loneliness by not dying alone, but also not wanting to have a commitment. Perhaps prostitution could be the solution. I mean that wholeheartedly. Legalize it. Gold Rex King wants to know if Florian will be on Kino tonight. Yes, indeed! Yes, indeed. Can't Kino without Florian. See a therapist? Sure. It's not for everybody, but wouldn't hurt to try. Yes, there is a lost episode of Is It Kino featuring my brother Patchy. We reviewed Twilight, filmed it back in November, right before my channel got taken down. Uh, it will come out. I just keep forgetting to care. 
but I'll, I'll drop it to the masses one of these days. Not as an official episode, but as a bonus on the website. How many calories a day does Erich consume? Uh, on average, zero. Because he uh, does fasting. He, I think five days out of the week, he doesn't eat anything. He's an absolute madman, but he's shedding a lot of weight. I don't know if it's the healthiest thing, but it's what he's doing. I trust him. All right. All right. Here's a brand new story just came in from one Patchy Jones. I hate it when my brother Mumkey has to go away. My parents constantly try to explain to me how sick he is. That I am lucky for having a brain where all the chemicals flow properly to their destinations like undammed rivers. When I complain about how bored I am without a big brother to play with, they try to make me feel bad by pointing out that his boredom likely far surpasses mine, considering he's confined to a dark room in an institution. I always beg for them to give him one last chance. Of course, they did it first. Mumkey has been back home several times, each shorter in duration than the last. Every time without fail, it all starts again. The neighborhood cats with gouged out eyes showing up in his toy chest. My dad's razors found dropped on the baby slide in the park across the street. Mom's vitamins replaced by bits of dishwasher tablets. My parents are hesitant now, using last chances sparingly. They say his disorder makes him charming, makes it easy for him to fake normalcy and to trick the doctors who care for him into thinking he is ready for rehabilitation. That I will just have to put up with my boredom if it means staying safe from him. I hate it when Mumkey has to go away. It makes me have to pretend to be good until he is back. Tragic story from one Patchy Jones. Hashtag save Patchy's brother. Hashtag entertain Patchy. Hashtag pray for Patchy. <laughs> I'm with the sheep on this one. What did the sheep say? I missed it. Now I'll never know. What are you going to do? Tragedy. Hashtag let Patchy play Spyro. Hashtag be a better brother. Let's get these hashtags trending, folks. Patchy is manipulating you. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll let Patchy play Spyro. I'll play Spyro with him when we go to the Aventasia concert. When is that, in June? I don't remember when it is. Hey, if you live in the Chicago area and you like... Aventasia. We're going to the concert. I don't remember when it is, but we'll be there. Fuck yeah. I thought Patchy would let us know when the concert is, but he did not, so we'll move on. And uh, they're still not here yet, so let's just go to the next story. Let's see. <laughs> no, I'm not going to read animated demons. All right. Here is one. Okay, from an 18-year-old girl. Always interesting. Concerts in May, good. Dear Mumkey, I've been a pretty big fan of you for a while, and recently I've been binging all of the available content you have on your website as well as on your remaining channels on YouTube, and I thought I'd submit this to you. I'm an 18-year-old girl, and I'm constantly haunted by... And I'm haunted by constant suicidal and depressive thoughts. Isn't that weird how you read a word early that's like five words ahead? How does my brain skip all that shit? 
This has been going on for as long as I can remember, but your videos are some of the only things that can distract me during one of my bouts. I can't thank you enough for that. As it stands, I have nothing to live for. No job, car, aspirations, or any sort of skills that are marketable. I can't kill myself right now. However, as my family is already suffering at the loss of several relatives this year, and I couldn't put my grandmother through the death, death of yet another child. The only good thing life has ever given me has been my physical appearance. No, 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 bad me, no. However, it hasn't actually had any benef uh, beneficial effects on my life. I graduated school last February and am too poor to go to college. I really don't know what to do now. I just don't want to feel pain anymore. Do you have any advice for me? And that's the end. <laughs> no, stop saying send nudes in the chat! Disrespectful! Unless she did go out of her way to say, I am a hot 18-year-old girl, and I'm a huge fan of you. How, how am I su supposed to respond? <laughs> By doing the proper thing and saying, don't kill yourself. Don't... Do anything rash. Don't show me any particular rash you may have. Don't. <laughs> All right. I think we're going to end Depression Chamber there because it looks like Florian is ready to hop in. All right. Let's get Florian in here. We'll have a little pre kino discussion. Enough being sad today. Got to mute the music. If you guys have any advice, I'd love to hear it for uh, for that girl. <laughs> I'm leaking pre kino <laughs> Check out this this one of a kind dinner chair with my pillow stuffed in it so it doesn't hurt my back because it's just metal bars as if I'm in prison. These are the chairs of one sheep over Jones. She thinks, oh yeah, these will be comfortable to eat fucking dinner in. Fucking metal bars. Awesome. Great. Expert level wife. She's wifing on expert mode. Yeah, fuck you, sheep. It's an Asperger chair. Could be sitting in my comfy desk chair, but I have not greased it, and it's very loud for podcasts. Very loud. Oh, Florian's here, and I can't even hear him. Yeah, welcome to the depression chamber. How are you doing? Hey, I, I can now hear you, Florian. How's it going? Oh, uh, great. Hopefully the chat can hear you okay. Well, yeah, let me... Move closer. There you go. It still says the depression chamber on the screen. Yeah, yeah. I'm fixing. I'm still in black and white, my man. I man, I had to complain about sheep over shitty chairs. <laughs> had to. No, man. Uh, how do chairs I this? are the worst. Well, this one is. Well, mine's always squeaking. Gotta get a new one, but then. All right, we could just. They all squeak. There's got to be a way to grease it up. Nah, I tried it. It's Fuck. doesn't work. Well, it stopped for like a brief time and then it started again. <laughs> well, that's really go. depressing. Now the color's back. Oh no! <laughs> Thank goodness. Got to get color back and everything. You tell everybody about the great day you've had so far. While I fix all my dumb bullshit. A great day where I just got up. Hmm. <laughs> oh man, yeah. Yeah. What side stopping. of the bed did you get out of when you woke up? Oh, the right side. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. It's in the left side of the room, so I guess that was my only choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't have your bed in the middle, so then when no. you have a honey come over, she can easily get into bed. 
Or, or escape. Hmm. Well, oh, you don't want her to escape. <laughs> Oof. Uh oh. Well, All right, we, we had. I think we had a donation come in for you. Wow, just for me. Michael says, uh, "When Florian arrives, we go from the depression chamber to the gas <laughs> chamber." Florian. God damn it! Do you do you get it that reference so by well. by chance? Do you, is that a? Does that get no, your noggin no jogging? Idea. What what are you talking about? <laughs> I, I assume you're loud enough in the chat because I don't see anybody complaining yet. If I need to, sheep, you tell me. Do I need to turn him up or down, or is he is he brown and down? Let's see what movie are we doing? Uh, Happy Death Day. I think that's three words. To to you. you. That's right. It's a two and a you. Is that one word? Hmm. It's it's text, speech, whatever. <laughs> Sheep over says, say something, Florian. Oh, jeez. She must really not be hearing me then. <laughs> All right. Well, the, the title should be you. updated. Rather hear him than you. Yeah, me too, Patchy. I'd rather hear Florian over me any day. Uh, it seems like we're both sounding fine. Good. The best. Now, where is Eridge? Damn it. Probably sucking down some soy milk. Mm. Uh, no, no, he only drinks water on weekdays. No, no soy. A no soy diet. But how does he sustain himself then? He He's trying to unsustain himself. He's trying to decrease. <laughs> That's the whole gimmick. <laughs> Is that actually working? You've met him. Is he is he sinner now? Uh, yeah, he's getting better all the time. I think he looks great. Wow, really? Yeah. So in that I'm video, right, when you you were on the subway, is he much fatter in that one? Uh, <laughs> I would say I wouldn't say he's much fatter. I would say today he is much thinner. Body positive oh. language, Florian. Oh, God damn it. Never, I would never use the F word like Quentin reviews. Holy In this case, shit. the F word being fed. This is not no word I'm allowed to say anymore. This no, is terrible. no, you're so insensitive and rude. I am. No, no wonder well, why Edmund kicked you off the binding of Isaac too. God you're so damn rude it! To him. Did you call him well, fat? I think... <laughs> well, I think we're gonna stop fat shaming, shaming. Okay, <laughs> yes. it's gone too far. You're right. I just can't help myself. Okay, I I know I shouldn't be fat shaming, but every time you you fat shame shame me, I I just feel like fat shaming. I don't know, man. Uh, do you want to collab with me on a video I'm making soon about uh fat people? Okay. I think you could be what? funny. There's a show called <laughs> Full Frontal with Samantha B and everybody listening. Expect this video to maybe come out. They recently had a segment that was written by the two, and they talk about this in the segment. It was written by the two most obese women on the writing staff, and they come out on stage and they do this little presentation about uh, fat people in the media. And these women are they're morbidly obese. They're huge, and they say completely seriously, and they're like showing studies and shit. These two fat women who wrote and performed this say oh, man. that diets never work. It's scientifically proven that nobody <laughs> has ever lost weight from diets. So I, I want to make a video like uh, two morbidly obese women give advice on how to lose weight. What? Why the fuck would they be the experts? You think maybe I would want to hear this from somebody who has lost weight, you fat fuck? You, really? Two f morbidly <laughs> obese women are going to tell me that diets don't work? Are you fucking kidding me? It's called stop eating carbs, you fucking fat fuck. <laughs> what are you fucking talking about? Of I course know, diets fucking work. Them. E. Rich is on a diet right now and he's losing weight. How no, dare? So it's so sick. fucking dangerous that these fat broads are telling people watching <laughs> the show, don't even bother dieting. It doesn't work. Are you fucking insane? Carbs in, uh, uh, calories in, calories out. It's part of the diet and exercise regimen. You're just fat and lazy. Damn, nah, man. They're right. I, I tried it. It doesn't work. I, I used to, to be able to lose weight, but no longer, man. Yeah. Something must have changed. There was a disturbance in the 
in the fat and now I can't do it anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's not because you literally eat a pizza every day for lunch. Yeah, no, that, that has nothing to do with it. The pizza diet's going great. It just isn't working somehow. No, yeah, yeah, sheep over, yeah, lifestyle change <laughs> is a diet. It's called, you can't do a three-day diet and expect to lose weight. It has to be your whole life is the diet. That's the point. They're saying diets don't work. Yes, they do. It's called for the rest of your life, control what the fuck you're eating. They seem to be under the impression, no, nah, no, nah, there's nothing you can do. Just keep eating whatever you want. It's, it's, it's literally called a diet when you change what you eat to lose weight. Oh, damn. Well, do you know Gavin McInnes? Uh, it sounds familiar, but I'm not familiar. <laughs> well, he's so. some kind of right-wing YouTuber, but he's lately made a video about about fat people, and he he wears a a big big giant fat suit, and he <laughs> he, he he watches these 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 fat women and and their fat acceptance thingy, and it's I I don't know, I guess it's funny, but you probably won't have time to check it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a very busy man. Oh my God, E Bitch McSoy is here. Hey, e Rich. That's right. Erich, is it true that Asterios canceled your Star Trek podcast with you because your audio is so shit? Is that true? Uh, Whoa. Wow. Um, he, he posted that both on Twitter and on Instagram, so I'm just asking. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess. What the fuck, that, that would be the only thing that makes any sense. You gotta fix oh, your sweet. audio. I find... Oops, I, I joined the wrong station. This is... This is something that he didn't talk to me about. Is what? <laughs> he posted it on yeah. Twitter and Instagram. Yeah, I know, but he didn't tell me, hey, dude, your audio is kind of shit. Like, <laughs> I'm not gonna oh, do this. Oh, but he told you that he quits, right? What? No? I found about it. Uh, I found out about it through Twitter. Wow, he didn't no, even talk to you about it? The most reliable news source. Hmm. That's kind, well, that, that's kind of sad. That's fine with me. Finally, I get to talk about the, the Star Trek with you. Well, well, we, uh, we don't need wait. that guy. Who said that? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you, you only have another host in mind? Damn. Now, nah, I, nah, nah, e nah, Rich, nah, I was confused nah. because he said in his post, I'm sorry that the last episode of the Star Trek podcast sounded like shit. I went and clicked on it. Maybe it was the wrong one, but it sounded perfectly fine. Your audio was on par with his. So uh -huh. w what the fuck was he talking about? Was, I, I, is there an unreleased episode that he thought came out? Well, the thing yeah. is, you also sound terrible through Erich's internet. Is well, he, I, I assume. That doesn't matter. We're using fucking recordings. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well. Wait, who edits it? Me. Damn. Well, you do not. Well, E. Rich, I'm sorry I brought this dirty laundry to the table in front of all 180 listeners. No, you're not. <laughs> well, oh, no, I'm sorry, 172. You're not sorry. Uh, speaking of which, uh, uh, how, how, how is your configuration right now? Your audio is not very good. Oh, it isn't? Um, no. Oh, no. I think you should just maybe get a little closer to the mic. All right, how's that? Yeah, that's much better. That sounds fine to me. All right. Everybody in the audience, do they both sound okay? Wait, that know. sounds different. I don't hear a difference. Does Damn it sound it. different? He sounds a little louder to me. Okay. Oh, I thought you meant the quality, right? <laughs> no, the quality is nothing that can be done. Shibo versus <laughs> it sounds good. Okay, so we sound good. Hey! You guys want to get talking on some movies, folks? Yes, yeah. all of the movies that we've seen. No, we're only doing one tonight, Florian. <laughs> okay. We'll get to Anita another day. Uh, Anita? Anita. Battle Angel Anita Sarkeesian. Oh wait! Oh what? my God! Wait, wait, it's not Anita. What's her fucking name? Alita. 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 <laughs> 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 Oof! Uh, this episode of Pre-Kino was recorded before Monkey was kicked off the podcast. Mind the fuck up. <laughs> anyway, wow, folks, that's a deep fucking cut. Uh, it's yeah, not, we, it's we, not that we, deep. We're pushing you <laughs> off the the Pre-Kino podcast. That's right. Let's see, can I it's... turn up E Rich manually? He's still fucking quiet. Today. Yeah. Turn me up, scared. Daddy. Uh, what am I doing wrong? Maybe I'm turned up still. Turn me up, turn me on. Whatever. If Sheep says it sounds okay, then it sounds okay. Folks, what we're gonna do is we are recording a podcast that is going on iTunes and all these things. So we're going to ignore the Twitch chat for the time being. 
Then after the show, we will come back, answer your questions, hang out with the chat. I'll read all the missed donations, all that jazz. Don't turn up. I, it's uh, it's fine right now, right? I'm not. I'm not Could changing it be anything. Too loud. Uh, they, they're saying it all sounds fine. Oh, I, okay. I think Patchy is streaming the stream right now, <laughs> so that's fun. Is all he right. with you? No, no. All right, oh, everybody man. says it's fine. You guys want to get started? Yeah, sure. Yeah, let's do it. Wait, do I sound terribly sick? Not. You sound normal. Well, that's good. Yeah. I've been sick for a while. I guess I'm fine now. Sick of E. Rich's audio? <laughs> Ooh, mm, like, wow. like a stereo. <laughs> so I'm the one who whose audio is sick. Hmm. All right. All right. Shut the fuck up. It's monkey time. You oh. you Austrian fuck. <laughs> it's 12-12. Oh. I'm very tired. E. Rich makes us record this late at night. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, here yeah, we go. Shut up! Really... Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll just interrupt you. You motherfucker! <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back to your favorite movie review podcast. That's right, it's Is It Kino? The one show where we watch the new releases and let you all know if it is indeed Kino. I am your host, Monkey Jones, joined as always by E. Ridge McSoy. Monkey, we've been murdered in every situation that we've recorded this podcast, but let's try it again and see if we don't get murdered this let's, time. Let's Groundhog Day this fucking podcast. Hello, everybody. Mm. Welcome back to your favorite movie review. And, of course, uh, Florian Himsel. I think I'm the murderer this time. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a fucking twist. You told us at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe I'm a red herring or a red squid. Hmm. And today, we are discussing the new Blumhouse Productions film, Happy Death Day to You. Erich, oh. Florian, do you know the original release date of this film? Is it April the 1st? Wait, no, that doesn't make that sense. It doesn't make any fucking sense. What are you fucking talking about? This movie oh, was supposed Day. to come out on Valentine's Day, April or, uh, February 14th, <laughs> which, of course, was the one-year anniversary of the Stoneman Douglas shooting. So oh, having fuck. a movie title that says Happy Death Day to You no. seemed a little bit insensitive. <laughs> so they yeah. changed the release date, and I uh, that Wait, was the that funniest shit sense. I've ever seen. But but they've got a school shooting every day in America. How can you even <laughs> pay attention to that anymore? Uh, it, it's uh, this is one of the bigger ones, Florian. One of the bigger ones. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, oh. we don't care about the ones where less than five people died. Are you kidding me? Oh wow! I guess I I gotta be more careful with with these records, huh? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> gotta make sure. It's I mean, not avoid over in Austria, I'm sure every day's a fucking death day for you guys. How many fucking people got killed in Austria every day? You fuck! Don't give us that well, shit. Barely any man. Barely okay. So our our murder rates are are really low. Uh, there were zero concentration camps in Austria, huh? <laughs> You're not getting it. past me today. <laughs> Uh, e. Rich, what did you think of Happy Death Day to you? Um, so I was a big fan of the first Happy Death Day movie. Um, I thought that that was a very good uh, slasher horror movie that played with the Groundhog Day twist concept of that movie very well. And going into this movie, I thought this movie would be basically a victory lap. They basically just do the first movie over again. And I was very pleased to see that that is not the case in this movie. It is a very different movie. It kind of relies on you knowing the first movie. And actually, knowing the first movie is pretty fucking good. Because well, this movie man. relies on a lot of the like emotional beats that really drove that first movie uh, to really sustain the second one. So I'd say in all the ways that a sequel can uh, continue the story of the original, I think this does a pretty good job of it. It actually fucking explains why the fucking time loop shit was happening in the first place. So thank fuck for that. But uh, yeah, I think this was a very successful uh, sequel, and I don't think it's making a lot of money at the box office, so we probably won't get a third one, which is teased at the very end of the movie. Oh my god, well, I haven't seen the first one, so I guess I'm <laughs> confused. <laughs> Luckily, they provide you with a brief recap at the beginning of this film. You could yeah, have at but... least in true uh, Isakino fashion say that you fell asleep watching the first movie. Mm, well... 
Guess I must have fallen asleep before even watching it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. So that's a unique perspective. We have a uh, guy who is a big fan of the first one and was <laughs> happy with the sequel. Guy who has that's not seen unique, the first yeah. one. And then me. Uh, well, three <laughs> unique perspectives. Boys, let me yeah. tell you. You know, on this show, is a Kino, we always there's one question we always try to answer. Do you guys know what that question is? Only one. Uh, do you see the main character's tits? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Good guess. Really good important. guess. Uh not not quite. <laughs> Florian, what question do you think we try to answer here on this podcast? Well, who is the killer? No. No. Someone who is the killer. <laughs> no. The question we always try to answer is is it Kino in fact? Uh, oh, oh. And let me tell you yeah. this. This movie is Back to the Future 2 reference Kino, baby! Wow, they let, fucking did it. Holy let me tell you, folks. Thing? Let me tell you. Back to the Future and Back to the Future Part 2, I consider them one movie, and it's the greatest movie ever made, folks. This movie feels like a spiritual successor in the sense of a Back to the Future 2. This Happy mm. Death Day to you. It felt so much like Back to the Future 2 that I was thinking, I'm going to say that on the podcast. But then they said it in the movie. The characters oh, in the movie said, this feels like Back to the Future 2. And I said, you're goddamn right it does. And that's why I'm <laughs> loving every moment. I love Back to the Future Part 2 because it's the sequel. It's the perfect sequel in the sense that the character time travels back to the first movie. And I love that. I think that's the best way to do any sequel. Every movie sequel should be the character going back in time to relive the first movie. And Sounds uh, like you might like Avengers Endgame then. Oh, oh buddy, I can't fucking wait. It's going to be the best movie ever made. But, uh, spoiler alert, Happy Death Day 2 is essentially that. But... A whole lot more. You got Rick and Morty dimension hopping. You got time travel. All these things that I did not expect from this film at all. But it was more than pleasantly surprised. Wow. wow. You guys are really eating this whole thing up, huh? Man, to me, I was just... It was just so crazy because at first it, it turns out that it it's this guy having a death loop now. But then all of a sudden he doesn't have it anymore. And it's the girl again. I was like, what the fuck? And... And you guys are all on board with that, huh? It just turns back into movie one, and then the the, the Asian guy is no longer wait, wait. a protagonist. It doesn't turn into movie one because she's in a completely different like reality. Yeah, yeah, big deal. She's her mom's alive. Big, and the big killer difference. is a completely different person. Yeah, what is with this bullshit, anyways? Why is there always a killer on this day? Uh, what is it about this machine that makes it that there's always a killer? I think it's, it's not that it makes it that way. It's just that there always is a killer. Like, yeah, it's just no. a happy coincidence. So yeah, that, not, that can't be right. Why? Clearly, why can't it be? It's a fun well, movie. It, it's completely stupid. Have, this one time that they that they have this time loop, there's also a killer, and then the same thing in in every other reality. Come on, it's gotta be based on that machine. Yeah, it's fucking uh, string theory, dude. There's some form of any reality out there somewhere are you really disputing that there wouldn't be some other killer in hey, another come reality? on florian you're a big Fuck fan you, of rick dude. and morty you know that this is how this kind of stuff would work well no in in rick and morty the pe uh, the, the murder would be a, a giant pizza i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> spoiler alert for this movie dude what the fuck? Oh, don't no. spoil the giant I mean... pizza twist ending Damn it. <laughs> yeah, he tries to murder them with a the phone instead of a knife. All right, Ebridge, let's, let's dive into a little bit of your opening statement. This movie, it's revealed that the reason why the time loop in the first movie is even happening is because mm -hmm. the Asian kid and his two Indian friends are doing a science experiment with some quantum refractor shit. It's always the same jargon in every movie, whatever, it's fine. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're using up all the electricity at the college, which is why in the first movie the power keeps going out. I thought that was clever. Uh, yep. if, if they thought way ahead on that, that's really smart. If not, that was a great way to incorporate something that was unexplained in the first movie. Really, the, and much like Back to the Future 1 and 2, even though we know that when they finished the first one, they did not plan to do a second one, but then they reincorporated shit so well that it feels like it was just planned from the beginning. This movie feels like, the second movie, feels like it was planned to be all one movie, the first and second one, and they just decided to cut it down the middle. Um, but my question to you is, do you find it 
in any way irritating or do you really like it that they felt the need to explain the groundhog gimmick with science and that it can't just be a naturally occurring phenomenon as the first film uh suggested um i think that since this second film is playing with like multiple realities and is is really just like digging down to this concept it's fine for them to want to explain something about that so that you're not just oh i guess this time they're jumping into different eventualities and realities and multiple dimensions like as soon as you get into that i think it raises a bunch of questions that uh, a time loop movie doesn't necessarily have to bring up i think groundhog day is kind of perfect in that way that it doesn't actually tell you why it's happening yeah it's just happening i really like that about groundhog day is that if they if they made a groundhog day two and the, the plot was there was a science experiment that went wrong and that's why he went back <laughs> oh, in time God. i feel like it would lessen the first movie for me because it was it yeah, was as if so <laughs> all of reality was uh changing its own laws to make bill murray be a good man <laughs> Right. Uh, well, good luck for you, Monkey. This year, a VR Groundhog Day 2 is coming out where you play what? Bill Murray's son who's what? in that town going through everything just like his dad. Is it a movie or a game? I said it's a VR game. What the fuck? What? Yes. Wow. I wonder what arc he has. I wonder if he's going to become a good person too. Mm. Fuck off. Well... I don't know, man. It seems pretty weird that they would just explain this whole thing. I I think that would take away from the first movie, but I guess I haven't seen it, so I wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah. It's interesting that the two guys who uh, saw the first movie and know all the characters uh, really enjoyed the sequel, and the, the guy who is lost was uh, confused <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> oh, I don't know. It must have been that good, huh? But I don't know. Yeah. It, it still seems like he would undermine that. So the... I think what this movie does really well is that you take the, a bunch of characters who were ultimately you don't get a whole lot of them in the first movie, especially like the the side Asian roommate character. You don't really he's kind of a one note character, but right. in this one, they and I I assume this is written by the same people, but they really want to take the time to flesh out these characters and hit us with some emotional shit that was set up in the first movie. So brilliantly done. We know that the main character, Tree, her mother died when they were young, when she was a kid. And when she gets thrust into this alternate dimension after the science thing go crazy, blah, 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 blah. Uh, Morty, uh, we're going to a different dimension. Morty. Uh. Now, in this new dimension, her mom is alive! And I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not the type of guy to just cry at any movie, Florian and Erich. I, I, I know oh you guys God. think I'm a bit of a soy boy, but... The reveal when she finds out that her mother is actually alive and just there for a, a lunch. I thought it was so well done that I almost oh. had an emotional moment, folks. It was, I thought you were saying you, you did. <laughs> it, was, it was very touching and sad. And yeah. <laughs> even though I've never lost anybody in that way, it still struck a chord with me. I don't, but Florin, you, you probably <laughs> thought it was dumb. Do you, do you cry big tears of soy. Yeah, I, I guess that seems pretty dumb. You thought um, it was dumb. I mean, at that point, you're just gonna have to start griefing all over again when she dies when she's old. But okay. <laughs> Oof. Gonna what? rip off that band-aid right that's, away. That's so what the fuck? That's a crazy saying, take. <laughs> Holy shit! That's a fucking galaxy brain take. <laughs> Be sad that your dead mom came back to life because you're going to lose her eventually anyway. Well, could be at any moment, you never know. God damn. Hey, Rich, what did you think? Um, as someone on this podcast who has lost a parent, um, <laughs> yeah, it was pretty emotional. I did not like cry or anything, but I was kind of choked up. And like, it's definitely like, I think it's a legit moment in this movie when uh, she's reacting to seeing her mom again. Like, I, I do. Love that the first movie actually set that out, and this movie actually uh, pays that off. Yeah, it's always interesting when you see a movie that's kind of just a fun gimmick, like Happy Death Day, and you, you wouldn't. Mm -hmm. ex it's kind of like the click effect, where I'm not expecting oh, any right. heavy, emotional, genuinely good film moments in the movie Click, but then everybody says, "Oh yeah," I f when he's lying in the rain, uh, all fat and shit. Yeah, I fucking cried. <laughs> of course I did. <laughs> and this Happy Death Day to you. I think did the same thing to me. You well, cried really in Click? Oh my god. Uh, yeah, I fucking cried a Click. I, I think I was I 13 when it came you. out. 
I fucking I, dare I, you not to cry at click, Florian. I, I cried the entire time in click because of how bad it was. <laughs> <laughs> wow, have um, we swapped bodies? What's going on here? Um, I never liked click. Hmm. Oh, well. All right. So, like, what I want to say about this movie is it's a kind of amazing how it completely switch, switches genres. Because the first movie is pretty much a slasher movie. Um, they definitely play with that uh, Groundhog Day type uh, uh, idea. But this movie almost completely ditches the slasher movie premise. And it's just a crazy fucking madcap comedy. And, and a sci-fi movie. And at one point, a heist movie. And, <laughs> right, and it's right. so obvious that these whoever's directing and writing this is just a huge fan of all the movies that I'm a fan of. And you can even see all these movie posters up in the in the room of the you know the, the main hero uh all right. the movies that they're ripping off are posters on his wall he has a back to the future poster right above his bed and it, it's it's almost i'm not going to say it's a quentin tarantino kind of movie but i will say i appreciate that idea of the filmmaker likes these things and he's just going to obviously steal from them even to the point where the characters point out yeah this is back to the future part two I'm okay with right, that when it's right. they're ripping off things that I already like to begin with. I don't know. Is there a pleasant surprise effect with, with these movies that you kind of don't expect them to go where they go? So the fact that they do or the fact that they try gives you that extra kind of love for it that you wouldn't have otherwise? Yeah, that's uh, I call that one the Lego Movie 1 effect. Ah, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Yeah, so I just feel like... It's not super well made, but it's well made enough. It's not what you. It's earnest, it to do. Floor or Eridge. It's earnest. It You're right. It is earnest. Yeah, it's Eridge. Earnest. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I don't know. It seems pretty lame to me, and they just put in all the movies they ripped off. Yeah, well. But okay, I guess. So, so tell me, in in the first movie, you say it's a slasher movie, but she she dies over and over again. How can it be uh -huh. still scary at that point? I don't even. Because you don't know point. how she's gonna die next. Well, that's the scary part. Well, I, I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't really say the first one is scary. I mean, a slasher movie to me is more fun. Watching a crazy mm -hmm. person oh. with a knife killing people, I think it's more fun than scary. I don't think either of these movies were meant to be scary. It's just sort of a fun premise for a slasher movie. So right. if, you're, if you're going into it trying to get the thrills and chills, maybe just hope for the thrills. <laughs> Well, what what I really liked yeah. about that first movie was that it turned the main character who kept dying again and again from like a, a victim into like somebody who has some ability to take out vengeance on their killer and actually like hunt down the killer and find the killer. And what is awesome about the sequel is that where it's that's where it starts from. Like I know we got have this kind of thing with the Asian kid and his machine, but we eventually get back to her who is reliving this day. But she's done all of that already, so she's completely competent in like grabbing a baseball bat and being like, well, I'm going to beat the shit out of this guy because right. I know exactly what's going to happen. Wait, so so how exactly does that happen? So when did she go into her time loop? Was that a year ago or something? No, no. It was, it, it the, was the day. Yeah, the day before. Right. So so she maintained all of her memories, but then I, I, I guess the Asian guy, no, I guess he maintains his memories too. Hmm. No, only, yeah. she, only she maintains she, memories. Yeah, only the person in the time loop remembers all right. the other days. Well, he was right. in a time loop originally, and then he, he stopped being in a time loop. I still don't get why he stopped being in the time loop. B because as they tried to fix it, they instead yeah, sent Tree into an alternate it. dimension. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how did, It's just how a bunch they... of just crazy sci-fi shit the whole time, which I thought was a lot of but, fun. But how does it target a specific person? How does it know who's going to be in the time loop? I don't get it. I don't know, fucking quantum leap or some shit. I, don't, <laughs> yeah. I, don't know. I, I was I mean, just that, having fun. That girl wasn't even near that machine at any point. It's just completely bizarre. It doesn't matter. <laughs> well, they, they explain it so it matters, and then watch the fucking movie. They, they if you like what the movie does. That's, that's the insanity. It's just like, oh yeah, the, we used all this design stuff, but then why is it her? How is that? A, how does that make any sense? Oh my god. <laughs> And it's not even her the entire time because it's the Asian guy first. I don't know. To me, that that part just hey, if is we're gonna, annoying. If we're gonna talk about things that pissed us off, uh, I, I I can take <laughs> yes. the reins on this one because the the big emotional climax of the film is that they they fix the machine. They can send Tree back to her reality, 
But mm. she has to make the ultimate choice. <laughs> Does she stay in the reality where her dead mom is alive, but she doesn't have any memories of their time together? But, I mean, she has another... 40 years to make new memories with her dead mom or or does she follow her heart and go back to the original dimension to be with the guy she fell in love with who she has only known for 11 days I mean the obvious answer is get that dick oh wow that's the obvious answer to you well, mm-hmm. what are you talking about losing her memory? Is she going to lose her memory if she stays in this timeline? Is that no, what no, you're she, saying? No, no, she, there, there was a, a bunch about how her mom had clearly, uh, her and her mom had so many things that they did together in this dimension that she just doesn't remember because she did not experience them. Right, so right. there's no problem with that. Well, so, she, it, so it's a problem fuck... with her. <laughs> So why the fuck doesn't she just stay in this reality and make the the guy her her boyfriend? How exactly. Hard can that be? That's that's exactly my point. Because they go out of their way to reveal that even in this dimension, the guy who is now dating one of her friends, the guy who she wants to be with, kind of has a thing for her anyway. And right. then it's revealed that the friend is cheating on the guy with some big hunky guy. So one conversation and she can stay in this dimension where her mom is alive and get the guy of her dreams. I I have no idea why she chose to go back to the other dimension. Erich, what am I missing here? Well, the, the um, whole thing... Well, I think... No, 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 no. Shut the fuck up, Warren. <laughs> no, um, I think they make it clear in the movie that this is a different like no matter what she would be living a different life like she'd be lying to herself to think that she can just insert herself into this situation and think that everything's going to be fine because they make it no 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 no. shut the fuck up Flory. shut the fuck up okay fine (laughs) no no i mean basically she is the sum of her whole experience so her losing her mother at the age she did and all of the subsequent like not having the mother in her life is a huge part of her personality and who she is to just like give that up in order to have your mother again wouldn't actually like solve anything in her life she Count- have her mother counterpoint like, that, that is consolation uh, ca- counterpoint e rich at mm-hmm. the end of the original back to the future marty is now living in a world where his family is rich and successful and they all have memories growing up with him that he could not possibly have because this is all brand new to him and that's considered the happy ending how come it's okay for marty to be in a different dimension where he has his whole family doesn't he doesn't know his family anymore but in this movie that's such a big deal go fix it well you know what i'll i'll just have doc explain that doc doc can you explain this tim florin you're doc i think Oh, I'm Doc. Well, well, I'm here to explain that this is completely bullshit. They have this whole, (laughs) they have this whole thing where it's like, oh, this is not my reality. This is this is wrong. This is going against, this is against the the will of of God, I guess, or some kind of crazy bullshit. But it's Mm -hmm. it's nonsense. (laughs) She could easily just find out all the things that 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 happened to her and, and learn them. And besides, she's a fucking high school kid how 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 much could have happened to her that that even matters <laughs> and and this this stuff what? about what well you can prob- kid, so nothing that happens to her matters florian you no. have to understand for e rich high school was the best years of his life he, he really <laughs> yeah, valued yeah, the, that period back and i'm desperately trying <laughs> yeah. well i mean she I, I guess things have changed but she could she could just learn what changed she'd have her mom i mean that would be more important, yeah. I assume. Yeah, then some guy she's known for 11 days. I agree completely. <laughs> yeah, and, and the guy is the same anyway. He, he falls in love with her again yeah, anyway. You so. could just have the guy in this... I don't know. That's the one gripe I have with the film is that... It, why not just stay in this dimension? But, like, but what Ebert said, oh my god. It's like... Her, her drama defines her personality. That is so fucking stupid. You think you think she's gonna stop being herself because the drama isn't there? That is is so stupid. It, wow. No, it's not drama. It's loss. That there's there's yeah. a difference. No, well, it's, it's the same thing. It's, is this I mean, loss? loss? That's the question. That wow, is loss Kino? Is this loss? Oh man. I guess All right, so <laughs> I brought up why this movie's Kino and my one gripe with it. Boys, I want to hear from both of you a good thing and a bad thing from the movie. Don't fuck this up. E-Rich, you go first. 
Um, I'd say that with the uh, sequence where she is killing herself in random ways in order to like memorize oh, yeah. the what should we call it the the formula that's needed to be done. I wasn't quite sure like why does she need to memorize this thing in order to get it to work? Like you'd think they could just go through it endless number of times and they'd get it eventually, right? Well, we, we established that she couldn't because she keeps getting weaker. But the thing is that it's it's completely stupid. Why didn't she, why didn't they just say, go through, you just make a list of all the algorithm and then she just says what what part of Which the list on? Because right. they are the same, they would make the same list every time. You just right. have to memorize a single number of, of <laughs> right. what part of the list you're on. I can't believe that they actually made her learn the algorithm. That's so stupid. I'll say real well, quick I'm... that uh, any movie, and there's only two movies I can think of, any movie that has a montage of the main character committing suicide <laughs> in increasingly yeah. funny ways, I'm a huge fan of. Unfortunately, it's just Groundhog Day <laughs> and these Happy Death Day movies. But we need more movies where the main character has like a happy-go-lucky three-minute montage <laughs> committing suicide because wow. it always makes me smile. I love how she jumps out of a plane in a bikini and oh, that was so like good. they just have the very quick scene of her hitting the ground super fast right. like when she was going in slow motion before oh so good but what i don't get is why do they always cut away from from her dying why don't we see the gore Wouldn't it's, that be it's cool? pg-13 horror oh damn it why must Which the kids I, always ruin everything i feel like that's one of the boons of this movie is that like if they could really just like focus in on the gore and her violently slitting her own throat that kind of shit yeah. i think it would lose some of the fun that's yeah the movie. yeah these movies are really? a lot of fucking fun dude i don't i don't want to be grossed <laughs> out yeah you don't oh, want her in like a saw God. situation where she's yeah. like a multi-paraplegic and like <laughs> would you like to play a game yeah, I uh, I appreciate the lighthearted nature of these suicides. I don't want them to make them realistic. <laughs> make suicide fun again. I've That's been, I've been trying for three years. <laughs> That's my God whole purpose on, on Monkey Jones. <laughs> All right, okay. That's one thing to bitch about, E. Rich. What's, what's one thing do you want to point out that was great? <laughs> oh, was the, fucking, great the fucking end credits scene. I, wait, oh, there was Jesus. a scene after the credits. Yeah. Okay, you're gonna have to tell us because I didn't stay for it. Wait, wait, you, wait, wait. I don't remember whether they were after every credit or whether it was mid credits. Well, either way, so I, I missed it. So you're gonna have to. You, All you, right. You said it teased set, another sequel. Yeah, they set up a, a sequel where uh, they, what is it? So, some fucking government agency pulls uh, the Asian kid and uh, Trey <laughs> aside, and they say. We need you to commit, oh, not commit. We need you to do more tests with your time machine thingy. And they're like, okay, well, who would we do it on? And then it, it flashes back to the first day, and it's the girlfriend uh, of the, the dude. I don't, I don't know what her name is. The preppy. The one who uh, pretends woman. that she's blind? Yes, yes. Oh, and she oh, is no. going to live these days again. Oh, later. no. I don't want to see it from her perspective. I don't like that character. Well, no, it won't be from her perspective. I think it'll be them running around in that situation with these government people oh. also there. Okay. I mean, I'm down for it. I, I really love both of these movies. So if they if they make more, I'll watch them. But yeah, like you said earlier. I think it'll just be them torturing her the entire time. <laughs> it, it does seem like... and and But these movies are very low budget, mind you. But it seems what like this might not make a lot of money. this time? I mean, I'll, I'll watch it. I, I just hope this movie makes enough money for them to justify it. I I hope so, but yeah, let me look. Let All me right, look Florian, hit us with a thing you loved and hated about the film. Well, I like that the 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 murderer always wears this happy mask, uh, <laughs> even though he's he's murdering her horrifically. At least he's got a smile on her, on his fake face. Okay, I, I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> No, actually, I, I guess I really like that it's a different protagonist this time, but then I didn't like when it turned out to be the same protagonist again. <laughs> Why would you care? You haven't seen the first movie. Well, no, but that just means that we, we have a protagonist change in the middle of the movie, in, in the first, like, 20 minutes of yeah. the movie, and that really annoyed me. <laughs> That's it, why I It care. is a little bit jarring, but um, but I was fine. I wanted, I wanted to see the Asian guy die over and over again. I mean... <laughs> Wait, do they ever reveal who was killing the Asian guy? I don't think they do. Well, he tried to kill himself. It was a different. Oh, thing. yeah, you're right. Yeah, I, right. I forgot. Man. I forgot. 
Yeah. That's when the movie point. really started going crazy. Yeah, it yeah, would have right. been really cool to just see clones of him trying to kill him all over the place. <laughs> um, all right. I want. <laughs> Monkey. So in its first week, it made $26.1 million on a $9 million budget. It is definitely going to be a profitable enterprise because oh, yeah. fucking Blumhouse, Blumhouse knows how to do that shit. But I think the first movie did so much better. Well, so it's possible. Hey, I if, if Jason Blum makes even one penny profit, he will give the director five more films. So right, we right. have to hope. Wow. The I first Blumhouse trilogy of this. films, folks. Wow. All right, now Florian, try as hard as you can to think of one more thing that maybe you didn't like about the film. I know <laughs> there's not a whole lot, but if you can oh, just man. rack your mind. <laughs> oh man! Well, I, I I definitely don't like the. The dean who constantly tries to shut down this science <laughs> experiment. What the fuck is up with him? I mean, clearly this is doing some actual science. I don't know why he's trying to shut it down. This, it could be huge. He could be benefiting greatly from this discovery, but nope. Guess he just wants to pull the plug. Erich, can what, you defend this dean? <laughs> he, he, he's not really a dean. He's a parody. Like He, he is the dean that is trying to fuck things up yeah. for the main characters. <laughs> yeah, it's I a guess. a fucking meme, bro. Yeah, the, the, this movie sure has a lot of memes, doesn't it? All these other <laughs> mm-hmm. movies, and then this guy, oh, Jesus. And, the, and the, the fucking blind acting meme, oh, God, that's the worst. I thought it was a funny scene. <laughs> what, All right, which do we, one? Boys, do we have any final thoughts on Happy Death Day to you? Ultimately, when it's a movie that is generally pretty good and it's just like a good comedy, there's not a whole lot to mine in the, in the Kino fields here. But uh, do you guys have any final thoughts? Would we recommend this film, Erich? Yeah, I'd, I'd fucking recommend this movie to anybody who's seen a Back to the Future or Groundhog Day. Any kind of time travel style movie, um, and they're fine with some occasional like slasher moments in it. This movie almost completely moves away from that slasher formula, and all for the better. Um, I think that this movie is a very confident kind of, we're going to do whatever the fuck we want, and <laughs> it seems like the audience is here yeah, for sure it. Do. They're not... <laughs> They're not as here as they were last year uh, for Happy Death Day to You, but it's a very successful movie, and I I actually really like the main character here. I think she's just yeah. the right amount of you could see that she was a preppy bitch before, but she's kind of like coming into her own. So I I do like that about her. Her her not give any fucks or take any shit from anyone is quite fun to watch. Floriad, would no. you recommend it? Uh, I I guess not. I I'm I'm just oh. completely confused because this, this whole thing and then so every time there's someone trying to kill her and it just doesn't make any sense and they don't explain why they're always trying to kill her. It's it's just completely bizarre to me. To me, this this movie didn't really achieve anything. Oh, and then, and then she just tries to. To, to go back in time to, to fix things, but what, what is she even going to... Oh, great, I guess there's going to be another movie explaining. I guess we'll see. I guess I can't judge it now. We'll have to wait for the next one. All right, folks. For, forget <laughs> those nobodies. Here's a real recommendation. <laughs> the only real way to watch Back to the Future is to just watch all three of them in one sitting and pretend it's one big movie. That's how I do it. And I think the same can be said for Happy Death Day 1 and 2. It, wow. it, it's so perfect to just watch them back to back as if it's one big movie because I think maybe that's what they intended. They certainly pulled off that effect. So if you have three hours to kill one of these days, you will have a delightful time watching these movies. But obviously, un- unless you're Florian, don't watch Happy Death Day to you <laughs> unless you've seen the first one because you will be missing <laughs> so much. And um, uh, that's okay. it. Would it surprise me if I said that I've surprised you if I said that I've never seen Back to the Future for Part Three? Oh my god! I mean, it's not a must-watch, but I. Oh. It's oh. the end of a trilogy. It's the culmination. Yeah, right? I mean, gotta be the best one. I it's like the best. I, one. I like it, but Back to the Future Two is my favorite because wow, I just I love. It, it it has the greatest cliffhanger in film history, and I'm a big cliffhanger mm-hmm. guy. I'm it's a big... in the old west. Oh my god! The the yeah, <laughs> fuck off. You don't remember. Back to the Future trilogy is perfect. Uh, anyway, anyway. Well, we we need to go back to the kino. We need to to force Emich <laughs> to watch these. 
Come on. Oh, God. He, Wait, I mean, like he, surely you've seen the first two films, right? Yes. How did you see the yeah. end of number two and you're like, oh, no, I don't care how, how Marty gets I, himself out of this mess. I didn't, I didn't hear good things about it, so I was just like, oh, it's not good no. it's, it's definitely not a bad movie. It's just, I, it's not as exciting as the first two to me. But I, it's still great. <laughs> it's still fucking Back to the Future. You have uh, to see how Marty gets out of the ultimate cliffhanger after Doc gets struck like, by lightning and sent back to 1885. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? What the fuck is Marty gonna do? Oh, I can go talk. I can go run and find the Doc from the first movie. Who this Doc at the end of Back to the Future Part Two is really the Doc from the end of Back to the Future Part One. He thinks he just sent Marty back to 1985. He's like, oh, job well done. Immediately, another Marty dressed in a leather coat runs around the corner and says, Doc, it's me. We did it. But I'm back from the future and Doc fucking faints. It's a to be continued. What the fuck? This is crazy. I love Back to the Future Part 2. It's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> um, is that the one where he gets very, very offended at being called a chicken? Uh, yeah. And that plot. Um, that that's, that's his weakness. Well, yeah, that's something introduced <laughs> that's in Back to the good. Future Part 2. But it's resolved at uh, the end of Back to the Future 3. And it's great. It's great. He, Marty grows as a character. And Does he say, yes, I am chicken? Is that, is that no, what happened? The, the, the dramatic, the whole drama of Marty McFly's life is that he wanted to be a rock star, but he threw oh. it all away because he got into a, a street race because some guys in a big monster truck called him a chicken, and he didn't <laughs> like that. So he, he gets into a street race with them, crashes the car, and injures his hand so he can't be a rock star. And then he has, like, a really sad, pathetic, miserable life, and that's what we see in Back to the Future Part 2. But then after going on these adventures and going to the Old West and all that, Marty grows as a person, doesn't take things so uh, personally. So then mm -hmm. we see him in this same scenario, this uh, streetcar race, and they call him a chicken. He's like, oh, yeah, let's go. Let's do it. And then instead of racing them, he backs up and leaves and he says, fuck that. And then he lives and then he has a perfect life. He learned his lesson over the course of the three films. It's beautiful. Wow. It's beautiful. You have to, you have to complete the trilogy. E All right. Yeah, Re Return of the me. King cannot be skipped. <laughs> I mean, if I see that as the same way I see Godfather Part Three, like just not worth bothering. But it's Did not a bad movie. One? It's the it's how the story That's ends. What people say about Godfather Part Three. Did you see it? Yeah, but Did you see Godfather God Part, Part Two three? didn't end, if I recall, with a to be continued, and you don't know how the story ends. Like this is the Part Three is the actual ending. You, it's not complete if you watch the first two. Godfather Part Three, you literally could skip. You wouldn't miss anything. I mean, oh, come on. I think it's yeah, yeah. Come on! Yeah. Well, it's it's basically like him falling asleep halfway through the movie anyway, so I guess he's used to it. <laughs> I, I like how I have to convince Erich that a movie he hasn't seen is good. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's seen the reviews, all right? He knows. He knows yeah, it's no. going to be Oh, come on. They're, they're all like in the 90s on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> well, no, actually, no. I, think, I think part two is like in the 60s. I think number two gets shit on the most. But I oh, love it. No. Anyway, that's enough. Enough kinoing about Back to the Future. Four is a kino. I have been Monkey Jones. Florian and Erich, where can people find you guys online? Check out Game Squid on YouTube, everyone. You can find me on Twitter <laughs> at E R I C H K I N O. Um, also, my YouTube channel is just the Erich channel. Me and Florian talk about movies all the fucking time on there. Uh, we'll, we're going to stream tomorrow night, right, fucking Florian? Yeah, the same time as this stream. Oh boy. Yeah, midnight. Yeah, I gotta wake up early again, it'll be great. And I was gonna do a stream on Sunday where I Photoshop Will Smith into into the shape of of, of the genie from <laughs> from the from the cartoon. But then already did that. Well too bad. I'm gonna do it anyways, because <laughs> you can watch me do the Photoshop. But I I got sick and I couldn't do it, so oh. I guess I'll I'll do it oh, eventually. No. So so check that out on my yeah we, well, on my channel eventually. <laughs> we all know you need to be at your fullest uh, faculties and attention in order to Photoshop turn Will, Smith. Will Smith into Photoshop genie. Well, all right, everybody. Speak. Everybody, we will see you next time with some Lolita Battle Angel Kino, <laughs> and the Oscars oh, are coming up soon. Who will win between the three of us? Who had the most Kino Oscar picks? We will find oh. out. Is that? This weekend or next weekend, E. Rich? Next weekend, I think. Uh, okay, Oscars are coming up sometime. For his I Aquino. saw Bohemian Rhapsody. It was shit. Uh, we'll see you guys hey, hey, next hey, time. Saw... Okay. Fine. You have something to fucking say? 
I, I saw the favorite and I thought uh, it was the nobody. worst. Have you seen that one? Shut up! Okay. Oh, no. Bye. See you guys next time. Okay. Uh, e. Rich, e. Rich, he just said that the favorite sucks, so please respond. No! I didn't, yeah, it was fucking great. The favorite was amazing. What the fuck is wrong with you? What's your opinion on this, monkey? I, I, we wanted to see it, but it's no longer playing near us, so I have not seen it. Oh, what a tragedy. Yeah. Erich, you actually like that thing? Oh the my Oscars God. are this fucking Sunday. Shit. Mm. And the favorite was like the most uncomfortable movie of all time, but for no reason. Good. There's no, no reason. There's no because stakes. There's no it's it, the main character is the queen. She can do whatever the fuck she wants. personal stakes. <laughs> of who? The fucking two main characters, Emma Stone and fucking, uh, what's her name? Uh, Rachel Wise. Well, well, you know, one of them's gonna win. <laughs> he didn't even think about that. He didn't even think, oh, these other characters might also have a stake in yeah, this. Yeah, but, but the thing is, one of them's gonna win. And I mean, it's probably gonna be the cute one, so whatever. You mean Rachel Weisz? Oh. oh. All right, if chat. You know. uh, welcome to the post Kino show where we <laughs> hang out with the chat and piss each other off. If you have oh, any boy. questions or anything for the, the Kino boys up here, just throw them in the chat. Uh, not very many people left here, so we'll probably get to most of them. <laughs> Guys, I can't remember all the bets I made. I said if Black Panther wins Best Picture, I will watch it on stream for 24 hours. I said if something wins, I will watch Brad Dassey for 24 hours, but I don't remember <laughs> which movie. And then I did a third one that I don't remember anything about. So if, if anybody I, knows, can you refresh my memory? I think it was the Green Book where you have to watch Brad, Brad Dassey. Okay, because he's a Christian. Okay, what was the third one I did? Was it Bohemian Rhapsody? Well, what are you going to watch on that one? I don't remember. I can't re fucking remember. Maybe it was like I'll watch Stupid Mario Brothers or something. You couldn't, oh, no. you couldn't pay me more enough money to watch Bohemian Rhapsody for 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't. We got to do it. Is it really gotta... that bad of a movie? It was fucking awful. Even the big concert at the end? That part was fine. Everything else was awful. Uh. No, I, I did not retract my Black Panther bet. Just because I want it to win doesn't mean I won't still watch it when it does win. Wait, what? A, a writing what? advice podcast would be kind as fuck. Uh, you want you want, want writing advice from us three? You guys have any oh, writing wow. advice for Billy Joe the Hedgehog? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure right. he just wants you in this case. Here's the best writing advice you will literally ever get, guys. Back me up. It's one sentence. You can't edit a blank page are you guys with me on yeah. this just even if it's shit just fucking write 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 and then you can fix it in editing you can't edit a blank page it has stopped me from having writer's block many a time because i was so focused <laughs> on trying to make everything perfect that i wouldn't even write the next sentence so what you're saying is that you, you need to write just so you can edit hmm. yeah yeah, you can't improve Damn. your writing without having something to edit. Yeah, write just so you can see whether you... What's the point? You're supposed to write just so you can see whether you're a worse editor or not. <laughs> <laughs> see, d don't don't follow anything Everidge says because he did. Uh, he tried to do Nano Ramo, oh, yeah. Nano right, Rimo, right. and he gave up after two days. Yeah, you're not, you're not finishing that one. Hell no. But what what about the story that you've started? I'm yeah. so invested. Yeah, we had a whole uh, podcast about it, and then he immediately dropped it. Yep. <laughs> See, Damn. as soon as I get into a uh, any kind of major long term stakes or major long term uh, investment, I fucking flake out. Fuck that shit. Oof. And you don't, didn't don't even let get your girlfriend hear this because of your audio. Yeah, yeah, oh, we, we should get a stereos in here so you guys can uh, duke it out about who, yeah. who, who's at fault for the. Uh, Star wow. uh, Star Trek podcast. I just listened to a whole bunch of uh, Boomer vs. Zoomer, and on that, he was like, I'm going to only do one podcast now. Oh, wow. But that's so not that's even true, because he's he's doing uh, Boomer vs. Zoomer and the Loudest what Podcast. We... Right, right. Well, are you guys getting um, along? You guys getting to some sort of soy war behind the scenes <laughs> that we need to know uh, about? No, no. He just says he's super busy, so like whatever. He, he is very busy. He's been, I think he he's doing like a hundred job applications a day, and none yeah. of them are turning out for the. It's 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 uh it's unfortunate. Hopefully he gets Aww. something soon.
He deserves so much better than he's got. Fuck. He he said on the latest loudest podcast that he got um, an email from Discord saying they have decided not to hire him at this time, and he said he didn't even apply at Discord. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> did he? Maybe did he, he said. <laughs> maybe he said he was looking for work on Discord, and they took that as an application. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he thought maybe somebody um, who worked there recommended him or something because he's like, I, I'm getting rejected from places I haven't even applied to. Yeah. Well, maybe he applied in, in alternate realities. You never know. Wow. The infant job application. Hmm. Erich, what's the state of the Erich YouTube channel? I see you have a, a new show where you, you recommend stuff to one of your buddies. Where, um, where where is Soy Wars? Where why are there no more Soy Wars? That's what we promised. Uh, Soy Wars is in the hands of uh. So, wait, was the name someone? What? His name is. Someone. Oh yeah, his name is someone. Neat. Yeah, his name is someone, and he said that he'd edit it, edit the episode, and then he just never got back to me. Well, yeah, you you gotta do it yourself, Erich. He said it's he was work. making no no. He said he was making a jingle for us, and then mm. fucking nothing. Well, damn. Yeah. Might as well cancel the whole podcast. That's right. And actually, I did get a response from somebody on Twitter who wanted to take part in it, but the fire was so out of me by then. That you I had just... people oh. paying you to get on that podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I still want to get on that podcast. Let's do it right now. What's the topic you wanted to, to argue? I'll I'll host it right now. Well, well I, I got to say that, that R2-D2 is, in fact, Darth Plagueis. He's the one who masterminded <laughs> all of the bad things. All right, Erich, can, can you counter that argument? I can't. He's right. I know. <laughs> wow, Florian, you won Soy Wars Season 3. I did it. Uh, yeah, if you, if you look, then R2-D2 is always helping to, to get things going the way they, they're meant to. And, and you can tell that he's just taking revenge on his old pupil at, at first. And then in the end... I guess once he's he's done that, he just shuts down and he doesn't care anymore. In 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 uh, the last Jedi, yeah. No, that that was in uh, the Force Awakens. He went to bed. What the I fuck? Guess, People yeah. are asking me questions. Oh no! Non-core splat books. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> what? <laughs> what did they say? What is your opinion on half elves? Good question. I guess what? Hmm. What, what, what does is that your, even mean? What is what your opinion on half book? elves? Um, they're trash. Wow, what? racist. Michael says C three PO is a trans droid. Discuss. <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I, topic. Well, I, I think in, in deep down he feels like he should be golden, but then he gets a red arm and and stuff, and it really right. messes him up. Yeah, he, he had the silver, he had the surgery to change his body, and now he feels better <laughs> yeah. about himself. A plating confirmation surgery, I believe it's called. <laughs> yeah. What is your opinion on dirty half orcs? Um, actually, half orcs are good and fun. Wow, sexist. Damn. Any advice for picking a college major, Florian? You're the expert on this. Go. Oh well, don't do it. College isn't worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I went to college and I quit because I saw that I was just doing my job, but without getting paid. So there you go. Just just program on your own. That's that's all. Wow. <laughs> Erich, do you have any advice for helping a, a freshman student choose his major in college? Three words. Oh, no, sorry, two words. Gender studies. No, 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 no. That was a joke. Soy studies. Yeah, right. Um, Gender studies? Oh, my God. <laughs> um, hmm. Basically, in the, in your first two years, it really doesn't matter. Try to find what you wow. most want to do. Um, and then in your last two years, you should have a major and find something you want to do. I, I, would, uh, I wouldn't say the first two years doesn't matter. I would say if you don't know by the beginning of your sophomore year, you should probably start to panic. Take all the, mm. the general shit your freshman year that everybody has to take no matter what major and minor they do. But you, if you want to graduate in time or even early like I did, you should really know for sure what you're doing at least halfway through sophomore year because you got to start taking so, some of these majors. You got to do like 14 fucking classes. There's not enough time to do them all in the last two years. 
Maybe you should find a way to be an exchange student so you don't have to pay the, the college debt because it's free in Europe, I think. I, I, I don't know about that. I think exchange students have to pay way fucking more. Well, I, I don't know. I, the studying is free. Why not just move to Europe then? Just just move there for four years. Oh, I guess. Take advantage of it. just move to Europe, Florian? Yeah, just move to yeah. Europe, Florian. Yeah, Fuck. easy. I'll, I'll move to Europe. Michael <laughs> says be an engineer. Like in that Aliens movie, right? Yeah. Prometheus. <laughs> Just be one of those. Oh, wow, yes. That's what I think of when I think engineer, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to splice aliens together. That will be fun. An all-round engineer. Of, Read of the aliens. donations you missed during the podcast. Uh, there was only one, and I uh, don't want to read it. <laughs> Uh, if, if there oh, were no. if there were bits, I I don't know how to pull up the bits, unfortunately. But uh, the one donation I missed is not worth reading, unfortunately. Do the bits have text in them too? They do, but I don't know how to read them. Oh no! Well, that's no good. Yeah. Well, hmm. what are you gonna do? <laughs> yeah. Florian, can you confirm or deny the years nineteen thirty nine and nineteen thirty five happened? <laughs> Did those years I think happen? They happened. <laughs> they happened? My question is what happened? <laughs> oh man. Did the, years, did the years happen? Florian, do you have any denials to make? I don't have any denials to make. <laughs> wow. So you're saying you did it single handedly? Whoa. Wow. Yeah, before I was Shit, born. I, I I guess I'm the time traveling Hitler. You never know. Whoa. <laughs> Damn. Oh yeah. Is it seven a.m. over at where you are, Florian? It is. Why the f you wake up at five a.m. to do this podcast? Erich is fucking us both. <laughs> Wait, I don't mind up getting up early. Yeah. Well, five thirty. Mm. <laughs> don't <laughs> give him your pity. He's fucking rich. I don't know, Florian. This guy in the chat says there are five stages of Holocaust. The first is denial. Is that true? Oh. Is wow. Right? Well, is this from the perspective of of a Jew or of a Nazi? It's from your perspective, I assume. Well, I don't know. I could be I could be holocausted or could be causing the holocaust. You don't Ooh. know in this scenario. Guys, if I ever ran a Yu-Gi-Oh store, I would title the holographic section uh prices holocaust. Oh, okay. Like there's a different cost for the holographic card, so you would Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, that mm -hmm. makes sense. Uh, you pay in futuristic credits. Hmm. I, I I once read somebody say, and I I don't agree with this. It was truly disgusting. But somebody once said that the Holocaust was a hollow cost for humanity. Didn't cost them much at all. I was like, whoa, too wow. too far, Damn too far, disgusting, thoughts. disgusting. Anyway, uh, it's terrible. <laughs> I, th I think we're pretty much done here. Uh, I don't see much going on in the chat really? other than accusing Florian of committing the Holocaust. <laughs> so Wait, it's hilarious. This is, this is your fault. You, you're gonna, you're gonna control your fans, Mom. What are you oh, doing? Oh man, yeah. Well, <laughs> why, why are my mind control powers not working? Why can't I control these people? Oh, <laughs> I don't know. You accuse me of the Holocaust every day, and now your fans are doing it. See, oh, you're, man. you're making this this toxic environment for me. I don't know, man. I'm uh, nourishing and enriching this toxic environment where people <laughs> attack each other. Have you guys seen oh, how many views that that snippet got on YouTube of us three just reading all those messages? It's blowing up. Well, you reading them. <laughs> Well, yeah, but uh, like even like uh, the Tommy C show, the Tipster show, they all showed clips from it, and you guys are in those wow. clips. You guys are being spread like wildfire people, across the commentary community. Me to say something. People were saying me to say Regin backwards, Regin backwards. <laughs> well, mm. good job, E. Rich. You you mm -hmm. tiptoed through that one flawlessly. Uh -huh. All right, yep. boys, let's say good night. I'm done. <laughs> all good right, good morning. Good night. <laughs> Yeah, everybody, thanks for tuning in to the two streams or whichever ones you did. Uh, go go check out these boys on uh, on the Twitters. You need to tweet it at these boys more. What are your Twitters? Uh, at E Richkino, E R I C H K I N O. Well, I'm Game Squidable. <laughs> G A M. Game Squid Able. Okay, Game Squid Able. 
Not disabled. He's he's able. Wow. He's able list. Some might That's say. That's fucking able list, you fuck. I'm just able to squid, okay? All right, bye everybody. What up? What about those who are unable to squid? Yeah. Well, they you ever think about them? Go to the Twitter yeah. and then they'll be able. <laughs>